BBC 97.3. Yeah. Nick Abbott. Nick Abbott. Right, so what are we doing? So, listening to Boris on the news, I think I've... I think I've come to the conclusion that his big problem is that no matter what he's saying, you expect there to be a laugh in there. It's it's actually quite difficult to, to hear him speak seriously and take him seriously. I know what you mean. What I find... Uh, it's a little bit different, but it makes him kind of stand out from the rest, is that he, he includes a lot of ums and ahs in what he says. Yeah, and there's, uh, there was a report about that uh, this week, about people who throw in a lot of ums and ahs, about, and it's just something that's close to my heart, because, uh, that's what I do. Um, and apparently, it's, um... I hope it's a good thing. Yeah, it, it is a good thing. It's almost completely the reverse to what you would expect, and, and, and as I go, I'm an earth, <laughs> trying to find it, uh, you just uh, hum to yourselves. Mm. All right. You can introduce yourself. My name's Nick. The last holiday I took was in uh, Paris. Show off. And your names are? And your holidays? Uh, my name's Chris, yes. and uh, my last holiday was in Greek Greece. Greek Greece, yeah. And I'm Elliot. Uh, last holiday in Malta. Malta. Oh. Who wins? Um, I don't think anybody wins. It's not a contest. Oh. Yeah, I thought I missed something there. Oh. No, not at all. No. I mean, I was I was going to say, um, uh, my name's Nick and I'm a Leo. <laughs> but, you know, that's just... My name's Elliot and I'm a Leo. That doesn't tell you anything other than that we'll, we won't get along. Uh-oh. That's, that's very that, true. Yeah, that's... What about you, Chris? Don't you tell me that you're a uh, Leo as well. No, I'm a, I'm a Pisces. Oh, right. Well, I, I knew you were going to say that. Oh. Oh. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> hey! Um, now, my excellent filing system is letting me down. Oh. I'll give you the, um, topics that I've got. Okay. And then when we come across it, I'll stop. All right. Iraq hero shot in UK, cops riding bikes, Britain isn't fit, gym fees to rise, deep voice equals success, men are better at cheating, uh, uh the, somebody who shot someone who was too young to know what he was doing, rubbish. Uh, the Downing Street Cat, the Spoof School Switchboard, 9 in 10 on the dole are cheats, a bug eats your brain, uh, bed bugs, which are sweeping the nation, the whistleblower of um, the uh, F&M Day Backle, which is not Fortnum and Masons, right. I always think that, it's not, <laughs> foot and mouth, uh, the drugs policy, police shelve crimes, kids and television, flights to nowhere, monopoly, um, uh, helps, you see, I was about... It's about halfway through. Finally, we got there. Hey. Any of those uh, topics to take your fancy? Yeah. I'll, I'll give you the complete list. Satellites in cars. Um, uh, people at, uh, in the UK don't study at university. No jail for have-a-go heroes. Superbugs. The middle class should choose bad schools for their kids. Financial advisors are bad. Um, advertising for plane passengers. You writing this down? Uh, I'm making note of my favourite ones. Good manners don't cost nothing. Anti-aging gene, retirement, uh, people want to go bungee jumping, um, biodiesel is not helping the jungle, uh, boy tears a plastic bag, uh, taxes up by a hundred percent, uh, since Labour took power, uh, Attenborough versus the evolutionary, uh, theorists, and that's it. You know we're only well, here for three hours. an excellent list. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, every week I bring in a, a, a list like that, and never get around to it and have to throw them all away. All that excellent work. Because they're, they're all out of date. Exactly. <laughs> I did, I threw away at least that much. Wow. Uh, just uh, coming in today. How annoying. From, from things that were, that I've been dragging around from last week, you can't talk about anymore. Is, is that annoying? Well, n not really. Oh. Okay. Well, I've made a list of my- That's just life. I've made a list of my favourites. Oh, good. Okay. We'll have those later then. According to a new study, the ums and ers that sprinkle most people's speech are not a distraction, but actually help with understanding. Understand? Yeah. Experts at Stirling and Edinburgh Universities asked volunteers to listen to a series of sentences, including a number punctuated by ers and ahs, like Boris just did. Hmm. And it sounds odd when somebody, when a politician does that, because they're normally reading it. They're not thinking off the top of their heads. You know, five people have got together over a table and, uh, you know, endless amounts of coffee and some fags, and they've come up with this uh, speech. They're not thinking this stuff up. 
what I used to think were bulletproof screens. Yeah. What an idiot. Where? <laughs> where when, whenever you see a politician uh, talking, he's got two screens, one on the left and one on the right. And I always used to think that, because he, you, I saw the President of the United States, POTUS himself, he uh, he used to have uh, a couple. Absolutely. Before anybody else in this country did. You know, they were uh, much more advanced with the technology. He never says, um, or uh, um. I, um, um, you know, the, uh, if you start thinking this stuff up, that was written down. <laughs> I used to think there were bulletproof screens on either side, but it's not. That's just where the script scrolls up, so they don't always look in the same place when they're reading it. They're teleprompters. Exactly. Well, how could they be bulletproof screens? They're tiny. Well, I don't know, do I? I mean, they look like, um, fire guards. You know, you go into a stately home and they'll have fire guards on a stick that, yeah. to where ladies used to sit near the fire, and in order to protect their face so that the, the wax makeup didn't melt, <laughs> they had these th things on a stick which looked exactly <laughs> like those, except these were th see-through. That's ridiculous. It is. What, me thinking that they were bulletproof screens? Yeah. Yeah. Well, how did I know? Well... Then they tested uh, these uh, people who had listened to two sentences, one including ums and ahs and one not, and they tested uh, what they could remember and found that inserting ers had a significant positive effect on how well subjects recall what they'd heard. Right. Up to an hour after hearing typical sentences, volunteers got 62% of the words correct where there had been uh, ers in the sentence. Okay. Uh, that compared with 55% for similar utterances when there had not been any stumbles. Uh, um... The tests have since been replicated twice. The results are said to be statistically significant. Very important phrase all so, scientists are striving for. So all these, like, professional speakers, politicians, Yeah, they're completely whatever. wasting their time by reading it and not, uh, not like Bouncing Boris, who appears to be talking off the top of his head and throws in a lot of ums and ahs. You remember what he says. And they, the reason that they're suggesting is um, it, it, they're, they're called disfluences. Dis- that sounds like a bad thing. Yeah, not fluent, they're disfluent. And the um and the er force the brain to pay attention, because you're bouncing along, listening to a sentence, which, that, which then comes to a crashing halt, a glottal stop. And your brain thinks, oh, there's a bump in the road. That- what happened isn't what I was expecting. Because right. you don't- you never know when, when someone's gonna say an um and a uh, or an r. No. Unless you're in Cornwall, when it's every other word. Arr. So, so it's like you're you're lo kind of listening out for errors in uh, speech patterns. Well, it's it's like music. It, if you're listening to background music, you can sometimes uh, not notice it. I mean, if for instance you're listening to um, or oh, Il Devo, boring, or uh, you know Clanad, boring, something like that, then you can just blank it out unless the the record or the CD skips. And then your brain goes, oh, what's happening there? I see. So it's like that. So they're gonna have to just rethink their whole Well, thinking. they're gonna have to insert ums and ahs. Just to make them... Uh, see, I thought the the reason they thought it was a good thing is because it just made you more human, rather than it made you just remember like what the robot. person said. Yeah. You know? Does that make sense? Academics now plan to see if the effect is the same with words which are used in a similar way, such as... <laughs> one of my personal, uh... A uh, bet noir, like, like you know, like. Uh, oh no! Oh no. no! Right, okay. You know, like, yeah, like, and uh, you know, and you know, yeah. you know, and like. I hate that. Um and er, fine. Right. You can um and er all you like, but like and you know, cut it out. Oh, but they're they're, they're handy because they're just little. I know space for this f time to think about what yeah, you're going to say. Like an um or an er. Uh. Yeah, but uh, um and ah uh is just too quick and too small to. Uh, well, not if you go um but, or ah. Uh. But then you sound like a complete dope. <laughs> <laughs> sound like <laughs> sound like a car cold <laughs> starting uh, 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 or something else. Of course. Yeah, which we won't go into now. But I've always talked with uh, ums and ahs and, uh... And, uh... Um... Um... I don't know what I was gonna say next. No. You're thinking... Um... Exactly. Hi, Wickham. Hi, Wickham. Hi! Edwina! How the devil are you? I'm all right, thanks. Good. How the boys? Be I don't know. Let's ask them. How are you, boys? Thumbs we're up here all and round. we're okay. Right. <laughs> Not very... <laughs> Well, they were busy, you know, doing <laughs> things. I think they're in there listening to Radio 3. Oh, right. Listen, um, 
I wanted to ring in to remind you that you and I have a bet about um, Gordon Brown calling an election. What? Uh huh. I I thought you might forget. Back in July, I rang in and uh, um, made a bet with you, and I said I think he's going to call a, an election probably next year between May and June. Yeah. And you said, no, 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 I think it's going to be after that. So there's all this talk in the media at the moment that he's going to call an election, but I don't buy it. And I wanted to know what you thought, and if your opinion has changed. Well, I don't recall ever giving you that opinion. <laughs> well, are you sure, Lucy? I think it was somewhere around July the 18th or thereabouts. Well, Lucy's off this programme now, so <laughs> unfortunately know. she's not, um, it's not, not someone I can uh, well, refer well, to. Well, well, Chris can always look back. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. well, we'll get the tapes out and but, we'll go but, through them, uh, inch by inch. But the bet was that if I lost... Yeah. Um, I, I, I talked to you. It was very easy for you. Um, you know, um, huh? well, if I lost the bet, what would happen? Well, if you lost the bet, uh, I would talk to you. If you won the bet, I would send in some money because you won't eat any products. But, and uh, send in some money for the producer to uh, buy some chocolate or cakes that you could have with your tea. Well, this sounds like an excellent deal. So if I lose, yeah. you'll talk to me. Yeah. Talk to me. Yeah. On the phone. Yeah. Like you're doing now. Yeah. Because you don't have to talk to me, do you? Well, but I like talking to you. Well, this nice. is a win-win situation. So all, all, all that I can lose is that, that I get to talk to you. Yeah. And if I win, yeah. I get chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that wasn't a bad bet, was it? <laughs> this is be it's the best deal I've ever made. That's what you said before. <laughs> but I just wanted to remind you because right. it's all, you know... Well, I'm glad you did now. Yeah. And the other thing, I heard you went to Paris. I did. Now, I've never been to Paris. Edwina, you have to go to Paris, you have to go on the train, and you have to go in Leisure Select. Trust me. Right. But questions are, did you stay there in Paris? Or, uh, yeah, of course. Right. No, I was there okay. for four days. Okay. So how did you know which hotel to go to, which area oh. to go to, and how did you cope with the language? Well, I did school, I did uh, French in school for yeah. um, uh, a couple of years, and it's amazing how much comes back. It does. And um, all you have to do, I was talking about this last night, all you have to do is be confident about saying it, because when you were in school learning French, and you had to stand up and speak the sentence on the blackboard, mm. you were very embarrassed, of course, because you didn't want to look keen, you didn't want to try too hard, or yeah. put on a very much of a French accent, so you spoke in an English accent, la plume de ma tante. You know, you just weren't going to make any effort. And if you take that uh, that mindset to France, it won't work. They'll have no idea what you're saying. Mm -hmm. What you have to do is just really throw yourself into it mm -hmm. and uh, roll your R's, Edwina. Right. And speak confidently and loud. Because if you start mum mumbling like this, I like, uh, do a cafe, I like to play, they're like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Like that. So after I'd got over the um, the embarrassment of speaking French mm -hmm. and started to project loudly like I do in English, mm -hmm. then um, they'll s uh, snap right to it, you know, after they've finished their fag and their um, eggs and uh, bacon and their chat. The mm -hmm. <laughs> service in Paris is absolutely diabolical. I mean, it's you think the service is bad in this, in this country, but try Paris. Uh, how French people can stand it, I don't know. Well, in it, what way? They're, they're just so slow. I mean, you'll be standing in a shop and they'll be wittering uh, some... And, you know, they're all very nice and all. And this is just the way they are. They don't pick on you because you're a tourist, because I, I wouldn't have opened my mouth yet. Uh, you know, I could pass for French. Uh, they're just so... They're just so ponderously slow. I think they have this attitude where... You're a bit of a, an annoyance. Mm. You're just kind of bothering me by coming into my store. Do you mind leaving? That kind of, it's just that sort of attitude that you get. Mm. Um, and I know that there, it's um, a uh, it's a, a cliche, but it's actually quite true. Mm. But I, um, I I love the French. They're very sophisticated. They are so sophisticated, as a matter of fact, and they're very thin. I didn't see a fat person the entire time I was in Paris. They're, they're whip it thin. They're like 28 inch waist thin. Um, and they all look better than we do. 
What worries that? Because, I mean, certainly the French women always seem to dress so beautifully. You know, they all, always... Well, I was trying to analyse this, and I don't think they wear different clothes to... Uh, I mean, if you take... Because uh, where I was staying was sort of the Paris uh, equivalent of like Belgravia or Knightsbridge, somewhere like that. And the ladies who wander around Belgravia all look, you know, very nice. Of course they do, they've got tons of money. Mm. But I think the, pa the Parisians take the same clothes and they just... I don't know, they add an air or uh, uh, some uh, accessories or whatever it is that they do. They just make it, um, they got it going on, girlfriend. Mm. <laughs> and what about, um... The area. That was the question yeah. that you asked yeah. me. Okay, the area. You want to stay where I stayed. It's an absolutely fantastic area because where I stayed, you've got the Louvre, which is um, a 10-minute walk away. You've got uh, Notre Dame, which is a 15-minute walk away. You've got uh, the Eiffel Tower which is right there in front of your face. You've got the Jardin des Tuileries, which um, every French painter has uh, painted, you know, Renoir and, mm. uh, and all, of, all of those uh, people have painted people wandering around the Tuileries Gardens. It's uh, the Rue de Rivoli, right by the Tuileries Gardens. Uh, absolutely fantastic. Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, you've obviously been to Paris before. 20 years ago. Oh, that long. Yeah. You see, I've... I've been to France. I mean, the last time I went to France, I went to a place called Val-Esther, which is up in the mountains. I went skiing for a week. val d'Isère. Val-Esther. Val-Esther. Past Grenoble. Right. Um, up in the mountains. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. If you can't go to val d'Isère, by the way, go to val le Spare. Yeah. It's, it's, the, it's the spare. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, really beautiful, uh, good for beginners, um, you know, who want to go skiing or if you're more experienced. And I've never been skiing before and the people were just so wonderful. Um, whenever I, I went in, you know, to, um, uh, to, to get some coffee or anything like that with a break, you know, the, the service there was fantastic. But Paris is always sort of, um, I, I've been reluctant because I, I, I've heard so much about Paris and I, my expectations are high and I never wanted to be disappointed. You absolutely have to go to Paris, Edwina. Mm. Promise me that you'll do it. I'll do it. Is this a good time of year to do it? No, because yeah. it's a bit chilly and um, raining. I, I've now it, made the um, decision never to go anywhere that's colder than here. Right, so when's, when's the best time to well, go I would to get, Well, I would get, you know, it's April in Paris. Oh, it's still that, is it? Oh, it's like the movies. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. It's just like the movies when you go over there. Oh, well. No, I liked it a lot. I can't wait to go back, as a matter What's of fact. What's your best place that you saw? Um, Besides the Eiffel Tower and the Louvre? W well, I went to the Louvre, but I found it a bit overwhelming. I, I, to be honest, I didn't really enjoy it. They've lit everything fantastically well, but it's mm -hmm. so gigantic. Gigantic that you you, you you don't even really know where to start. And I just w found myself wandering through the building, looking at the building rather than the art that was on the wall, because you'd need a week just to go around it. Um, there's a restaurant at the top of the Pompidou Centre. Yeah. Yeah. That uh, that has a, a view uh, which is absolutely fantastic. There's mm. an outside terrace. Um, I would go there. Right. The Pompidou uh, the, there's got some tremendous stuff in there as well. Mm. Well, I'll say good night. Okay. And I'll uh, li listen to your show. All right. Cheers, my dear. God bless. Ta-ta. Bye bye. Um, yeah, I know. I, c I can't recommend it enough, actually. And the train was great. In fact, I'm considering just going on the train just to eat, not actually getting off. Just going on the train. Do you get more legroom on it than a normal train? Uh, well, it depends where you sit. I don't know where. I don't know what the second class coach is like, but up front. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. Well, you get, yeah, you get table. Okay. And, uh, you get served at your seat. Do you have to sit by strangers? Um, no. You can get a two-seater, you know, one seat op opposite a table to yeah. another. Oh, very so nice. So you don't have to rub, rub, uh, rub shoulders with anybody. Ooh, let perfect. Let alone French people. Nice. That sounds ideal. It is. It's uh, ideal, in fact. Oh. Hey, did you learn that while you were on your <laughs> no, it's just a guess. <laughs> EDL vestibule. Yeah, whatever that is. Yes. I couldn't agree more. Here is Hampstead. Oh, George. Hi, Nick. George. I was listening uh, last night and somebody mentioned the Peter Cook-related uh, website. Oh, yeah. Stabbers.org. 
Did you get a chance to look at that? No, I've been very busy over at the other place playing... Rock and roll! Um... What, is, what is that, by the way? Stabbers.org. It sounds awful. Well, it was linked to Peter, Peter Cook and the Establishment Club, so right. Stabbers for the Establishment Club. Oh, right. Playing on that word. I'm going to make a note of it and put it in my pocket. Stabbers.org. Org. And I, I, I think there are bits of conversations on there between Peter and myself and others that took place about 23 years ago. Oh, did you know him? He was my next-door neighbour. Oh, I know where you live, then. Um, well, you don't. You know where I used where to live. Where you used to live. Oh. Um, did you sell up? Sorry? Did you sell up? I sold up, yes. Right, you must be rolling in it, George. No, I'm stint. It was, oh. it was a famous story. I, I got adverse possession of the house. I was living in there three years ago, and I sold it for £710,000. And three years later, I'm, I'm skinned and could be homeless in a couple of weeks. But that's another story. Um, there, there should be one conversation up on there that dealt with the um, ers and the ums uh, situation, which you would find amusing. Peter says, uh, to er is human, to um is divine, and then goes into uh, a little explanation of why it is divine to um and, and human to er. Um, <laughs> right. So I, well, I, I think it's great that these things are recorded and still available on the World Wide Web. Well, yeah, yeah. But, uh, can I just pause you there for a second, George? Uh, we, uh, do we need a break? No. No, not yet. Okay. Keep going. Yes, George, sorry about that. And, um, yeah, it was nice being linked to Peter. And through, through Peter, I got pally with uh, Ian Dury, and I know that New Boots and Panties is your favourite album of all time. Yeah, one of my favourite albums of all time. Ian Dury was um, was probably the greatest the, uh, the greatest live act I ever saw. I'd say equal with Alex Harvey. You know, the kids these days they just like the Arctic Monkeys, for instance. You go to the Arctic Monkeys, and their tunes are uh, snappy, right enough. They're all kind of the same. They'll start one way, and then I'll have this middle eight in the middle in the middle, which just sounds as though it's been plucked from a different song. They always have that tricky little bit in the middle, and but they just stand there. How boring is that? No, I, I, Ian and, and the Blockheads, well, they, they were special. I think the Blockheads still are special. Yeah, actually. great band, yeah. yeah. But Ian Jury was, uh, was completely unique. He was a bit of old um, Victorian vaudeville, wasn't he? He was a bit... Um, he was special. He, yeah. was, he was different. <laughs> I, I only knew him the last seven years uh, of his life. He came to live up here in Hampstead. And uh, as I say, I met him through, through Peter um, at the party when Peter launched the Derek and Clive Get the Horn. Well, where, where, so why can't I invite you to any parties like this? You keep reading about stuff like this in the paper and, uh, you know, hearing about it from people like you, George. Where, where, where are these invites that, uh, that go around to exciting places like that? All I get to do is sit at home and watch TV. I'm sure that's not true. It is true. I'm sure you, you <laughs> get Actually, it is true. an invite or two here and there. And, 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 um, the phone never rings, George. I had another thought about Boris and the Mayor for London nonsense, and, and uh, I, I'm trying to get a campaign together that we'll put up a candidate to give the people of London the chance uh, not to have a mayor sort of a, a, a non-mayor for London candidate. Do, do, do you think that would be popular? Here's what I think. Yeah. Um, and I'm just going to make this up off the top of my head. This is not what I have thought, but uh, it's just occurred to me. If, instead of having a mayor, we had a committee of, say, a thousand people who were put... Um, who and, and any issue that came up were put to these thousand people who were repre a representative sample of the general population. And they had to agree on a given on on one course of action, and um, and well, these a people thousand people ought to agree. Sh shouldn't it be well two, it, a majority, two, two thirds of them? Maybe. Yeah, something like that. We'll, we'll we'll work it out, George. Don't worry about the details. And uh, these thousand people would be changed on a regular basis, say every uh, three months or something like that. And uh, and so the decisions um, that were are made that would affect London would actually represent the feelings of Londoners, yeah, but as why, opposed to what, just one bloke doing it for political gain. Yeah, but why shouldn't all the Londoners be able to vote with the technology the way it is 
today, then then well, why should it be a thousand people? Why? Why? Well, not? I suppose yeah, you could just press your red button, couldn't you? Absolutely. Yeah. I've never pressed my red button. You wouldn't. You would never, or you have never. I have never pressed my red button. No. But you, but you would press it for the for the right sort of reason. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So if you bring could, back hanging that sort of thing, I'd be uh, pressing it until it gave up. But if you could vote not to have a mayor. Would you vote not to have a mayor um, and, and, and the GLA and all that all that that costs us? The, a, the apathetic vote. Oh, I don't know if I could be bothered. Anyway, uh, George, I've got to go, but thanks a lot, mate. All right. That's okay. Cheers. Ta-da. This is LBC. I'm Nick Abbott, and the number oh eight four five six zero six zero nine seven three. LBC ninety seven point three. Nick. Abbott. Well, let's get back to it. Oh eight four five six zero six zero nine seven three, and there were some uh, differences about uh, France that I uh, that, that were quite striking compared to this country. And um, chief among them was how the police act over there. What, what do you mean? Well, the police in this country, they're they're well, they look a bit comical. Right. It's almost as though they made an effort not to look militaristic. This. They've got the funny hat and the shiny buttons on their little jackets there, and I know that uh, now they wander around in flat, in like stab-proof vests and so on, and they've got a multitude of things hanging off their belts. Yeah. What some of them are, I have absolutely no idea. It's like Batman's utility belt that they've got now. Looks great, doesn't it? They've got it? no end of things hanging off that. Uh, Even if you stare at it for like h half an hour, you still can't work out what's for what, what you use for... In, in what circumstance were you staring at a policeman's belt for half an hour? Sometimes they come on the tube and you're sat down and they're stood up and you, their belt's at your eye level. Right. And you just can't help, you know, you're going, oh, what's, I wonder what that's <laughs> for, what's in that pouch <laughs> and... Yeah, best not to reach out and take a look. Nah. No. But the, the, there's a big difference between police here, and uh, even with their uh, their sort of tooled up nature that they're, that they're um, disporting these days. Yeah. In Paris, they do look very military, and they act it too. Like you, uh, like you wouldn't want to have you ask a, a French policeman if he wouldn't mind having his picture taken with you. You know, like the people, uh, tourists, are forever having their picture taken with British bobbies. Yeah. With their funny um, bosom helmets. You wouldn't want to do that in France. I think that they'd probably club you to the ground. Uh, well, you know, our, our police are kind of giving, you know, well, uh, tend to give off that image that they're, you know, part of the community and one of you. And yeah, the, when they're zooming by in their cars at 90 miles an hour. Yeah, when was the last time you saw one walking around? Yeah, yeah, good point, actually. No, but that's... The, you, you are right. They do that. It's it's all a bit, um... Well, I was going to say Dixon of Doc Green, but it's, it's further back than that. It's all a bit, um... Lavender Hill mob. They, they still are clinging to that old notion of, uh, we're not, uh, part of the military. We are, um, we're the police. And and that's and their uh, uniform reflects that. In France, on the other hand, it's kind of hard unless you knew what you were looking at. You wouldn't really know that they were policemen. They look like the army, and they do charge about in convoys. Whereas here, you'll see a police car driving about on its own. Yeah. In France, they seem to go about en masse. For, I was every time you heard a siren, there'd be a load of them charging through. Well, maybe that's the key to, I don't know, police Staying success. Staying alive. <laughs> just, no, you know, because if, if you knew every time, you know, um, someone got in trouble with the police, like, uh, I know a whole parade of them showed up, you're not going to mess with them, are you? Right. So maybe that kind of military-style policing works. I didn't feel, it didn't make me feel very comfortable, though, but I suppose that's not their job to make you feel no. comfortable. Well, no, on, on the other right. hand, yes, it is. But is it, no, but if you've got that, if people have got that fear factor with the police, then they're not going to go out and commit crimes. Right. Do you think? Well, yes, that makes a lot of sense. But with our police, if they, if our police are too friendly and too, I know, human, you know, <laughs> like, um, you know, you're, you're going to think, oh, it's just, you know, that bloke down the, yeah. you know, that bloke down the road, I, you know, I'm still going to go out and rob this shop. Right. You know. It's because there, nothing w will happen to you, because they'll just write off the crime anyway. And that, um, that came out, Because uh, I was a, a victim of uh, a criminal act myself. Uh-oh. Just recently. 
You remember that, don't you? Yes, I do. Yeah. Nasty. Very bad. Yeah, well, they wrote that off. Yeah. Oh, they investigated that thoroughly, they did. They gave <laughs> me a number and everything. Wow, a number. Yeah, some, uh, scumbag broke my window and nicked my sat-nav because I was stupid enough to leave the sucker marks on my window. And I, 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 as I got out of the car on that evening, I thought, I'd better take the sucker marks off the window because I might as well put a flashing light on the car that says I've got a, a sat-nav uh, in my glove compartment, which now doesn't have a, a door, yeah. as he ripped that off. And so I called up the insurance company and they said, oh, well, uh, was it locked, sir? The glove compartment, not right. the car. What? Yeah, the glove compartment. And stupidly, because I was, um, you know, agitated at the time and wasn't thinking straight, I said no, because it wasn't. The glove compartments come yeah. with locks? Yeah, they do. And he said, oh, well, then, uh, you're a bleep out of luck, aren't you, sir? <laughs> because, because, uh, uh, we'll only pay up if it was a locked glove compartment. No. Regardless of the fact that he, he ripped the button on my glove box had broken. Yes. And I'd put it in the ashtray. And so you could, so to open it normally, you'd have to get the button out of the ashtray and stick it in the little hole in the glove box to open the thing. But he didn't bother to do that. He just ripped the door off the glove box. So it, it doesn't have a door anymore. So whether it was locked or not is irrelevant. The car was locked, though. Exactly. That's it the... broken into the car. A little glove box, plastic little glove box lock isn't going to stop in there, is it? But they refused to pay out because the glove box wasn't locked. That's like saying, oh, uh, Oh, you know, oh, he broke into my house, uh, but, yeah, and he stole, uh, all my shampoos, but, yeah, I didn't <laughs> lock the bathroom door. Shampoos? Well, you know, something from the bathroom, you know. I didn't, oh, I forgot to lock the bathroom door. My mistake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> from the inside and then climbed out the window. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I felt so stupid for telling the truth. That's ridiculous. Yeah. So, anyway, that cost me... That bloke who nicked my sat nav, we hit, from which he'll probably get what, thirty quid? Yeah, I don't know. Well, it wasn't I don't an know expensive. How much they go for well, that. I know, well, neither do I. But it wasn't an expensive one. It was the lowest. Uh, it was the cheapest one that you can get. And yeah. a fiver for a glove compartment door? <laughs> no, he left that. Oh, Thanks well. a lot, mate. He also <laughs> left the thing that attaches the sat nav to your window. What an idiot! The sucker. Yeah. <laughs> So, which, which renders it completely useless. Do you- So, he probably got no money for it at all. It cost me about 500 quid. Do you accept any responsibility, though, because the police did give you a heads up that, you know, they are targeting sat -navs at the moment. Thieves are targeting sat -navs. What, is this supposed to help me? Well, no, is no, this supposed no, to make uh, me feel better? No, I'm just asking if you, if you, uh, accept any well, responsibility. Well, stop asking. All right. Police forces are shelving investigations into up to half of all crimes shelving, as in not bothering to look, including theft, vandalism, fraud, unless evidence pointing to the culprits is readily available. <laughs> in other words, if they just happen to stumble across someone doing the crime at the time. <laughs> Figures released under the Freedom of Information laws show that police forces are using new systems to screen out hundreds of thousands of minor crimes as not worth investigating. What? Jackie Smith, Jack A. Hello, my name's Jack A. I'm Home Secretary. <laughs> Jackie, you've got to call yourself Jacqueline. It's, you can't take yourself seriously. Jack A. Poor Jackie. Jack A, the Home Secretary, pledged last week at the Labour Party conference in Bournemouth that there would be a zero tolerance of neighbourhood crime. She was lying about that. They're tolerating it until they're ever a blue in the face. Neighbourhood crime? Yeah, which basically it means crime. Because any any crime com is committed in a neighbourhood. Yeah, ridiculous thing to say. However, the figures reveal how guidelines aimed at helping police hit government targets... Yes. ...for solving crimes mean that many criminals responsible for petty offences are not pursued. In other words, if they... Like my thing, they gave me a police number and they wrote me a nice letter... Well, they just... They just uh, xeroxed out, uh, 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 you know, the, the regular form the they sent, they sent uh, <laughs> every poor dope who's uh, had this happen to them, uh, and I'm sure there's thousands a day, which says, um, oh, very sorry about this, uh, but uh, there's nothing we can do. What? Thereby ticking the box. That crime has been dealt with. But did they fingerprint your car? No. Why not? Well, they're not going to bother to go and uh, to pursue the suspect, so what was the point of fingerprinting the car? But wh why, won't, why wouldn't they fingerprint the car? Well, I, I but don't... why would they? They're not going to pursue the suspect. Why wouldn't they want to pursue the suspect? Because they can't be bothered, because it's too difficult, it's too small a crime, there's too much of it, and they've got better things to do, like, oh, it's truth, I don't know, filling out forms, 
looking up their uh, profiles on my face Facebook? I wouldn't. I wouldn't stand for that. Oh, well, I, what, what I would, did you do about it? I would write a letter. <laughs> oh, a letter. Oh, that'll work. Yeah, <laughs> letter. Why didn't I think of that? Handwritten. Absolutely everything. The Metropolitan Police are screening out about guess how many? Uh, what, what percentage of all crimes? That's right, fifty-three percent. Fifty-three percent of the crimes that occur, the Met, the Met are just like, oh no, can't be bothered with that. So, is that <laughs> nearly all serious crimes, including murder, rape, and so-called hate crimes, are automatically investigated under the force's guidelines? Oh, that's nice. They're making an effort. Yeah. However, other crimes are screened using a solvability matrix, which comprises six or seven questions and is often conducted by a civilian telephone operator. If there are no obvious leads, such as the name of the suspected offender, <laughs> the offence is filed away and uh, they'll tick a box saying that it's been dealt with, thereby hitting a government target. So they're only going to choose to solve crimes which they think they can solve. Yeah, and, and you know you hear this phrase sometimes when some perp has been dragged before the magistrate for breaking into someone's car, house, whatever, face, whatever, and they say, and they want 300 other crimes to be taken into account. Is that the phrase they are taken into account? Right. right. Those crimes weren't actually committed by that person. In order to, um, uh, hit a government target, they'll say, right, we'll, we'll go a little bit lenient on you, if you'll say that you did these 300 other crimes that we've got on our book that we haven't solved yet. So if you just fess up and say that you did them, then we'll, we've, we can say that we've solved those 300 crimes. Isn't that incredible? They no, actually do that. That doesn't happen. It does, all the time. That's what that phrase means. No. Absolutely. I, I don't believe that. Any policeman that. listening to that, to, uh, listening to this right now, give us a call and tell me I'm wrong. 0845 6060 Yes, that's, that's, that's how they do it. That's how they clean up and, and, uh, and have a good, um, and have a good clean up rate. But that's a crime in itself. A crime, <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah, you would think so. Well, yeah, oh, well. I, I, I can't believe that goes on. Believe it. Uh, Norman Dennis. Director of the Community uh, Studies at Civitas, the poli a uh, policy think tank, said, this is the opposite of zero tolerance. You remember Jack A., Jackie Smith, the Home Secretary, she said that there, there will be a zero tolerance. What she meant was, there is not going to be a zero tolerance. They'll tolerate anything. If they'll tolerate that, how does that song go? They'll tolerate this. Yes. Uh, what a great song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Made even better, just so. Yeah, wasn't it? Um, where am I? It sends out a message to criminals and the public that when it comes to some offences, the police aren't going to do anything. And what that means is, people who break into my car know that they'll get away with it no matter how many times they do it. Even if the police apprehend them doing it, they'll still get away with it. Yeah, there was a campaign... Because they can't be bothered. There was a campaign not too long ago for you to... for sat-nav users to carry around a duster in their car, I yeah. think. Yeah, I do have a duster. It's on the floor, uh, of the passenger, uh, uh, footwell. Gathering dust. Yeah, because it won't fit in the glove compartment anymore because it hasn't got a door. Oh. Shut up. However, Mark, uh, Simmons, commander of the territorial policing in the Met, uh, in Met Police, defended the policy. He said there are about a million crimes in London each year and we have to manage demand. We have to make sure every investigation is proportionate and if someone reports a crime with no obvious leads, is it worth investigate, investing an officer's time in going to visit a particular victim? The Home Office uh, last week said, um, oh no it's not. Whatever anybody says, their answer is, oh no it's not. Yes it is worth going. This is how they turn New York around. You've heard it before and it's absolutely true. Mayor <coughs> Rudolph Giuliani, Rudy, uh, Supertramp wrote a song about him. That went straight over you, not into your old rock and roll, eh? Mm. Never mind. No. Um, zero tolerance. And this is what Jack A was saying about the zero tolerance policy. That's what that means. That's where it comes from. New York used to be the, uh, the used to have the highest murder rate in all of you, in all of America, which meant the highest uh, murder rate in the Western world. Mm. And then they turned it around in a matter of years by having an actual zero tolerance policy. This was before this whole politically correct thing where you're not allowed to discriminate against anybody, you know, all that rubbish that we're living underneath, under, under now. And if they, if someone does commit a crime, then it's probably because they were, uh, they had a terrible childhood and they were deprived of the new Halo 3 game or 
<laughs> they had an old-fashioned iPod, something like that. We'll give them um, a pat on the head and a holiday in Spain and ask them very politely if they wouldn't mind not doing it again, which is our uh, approach to crime these days. Good grief, I've become a ha I've become a hang'em, a hang'em and flog'em. Wow, yeah. Well, that's what happens. You see, you can be all, all very liberal and uh, inclusive uh, before you get um, uh, a criminal I I sticking his face in your life. Yeah. Afterwards, you want... D d d just, where, where do I buy a flamethrower? <laughs> 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 that's not too extreme a reaction, is it? No. Of course not. Hi, Louise. Hi, Nick. How are you, love? All right. Good. Um, someone once said to me, um, when you're young, if you're not left-winged and liberal, then you're a monster. If you're older <laughs> and you don't become more right-winged, then you're very naive. <laughs> <laughs> That's a really bad way of putting it. I think more succinctly, it's something like, when you're young, if you're not uh, left-wing, you have no heart. That was... <laughs> when you're older and you're not right wing you have no head <laughs> yeah, was... and i don't think uh, left wing and right wing was uh, actually how it was put but i can't yeah. remember the exact wording that's what someone said to me yeah. when i was in egypt they had machine guns the police and if they caught anybody doing anything like breaking into cars they'd shoot them just a thought yeah <laughs> good i'd like the guy who broke into my car shot oh Nikki. no i would <laughs> no i know i'm just saying oh i feel bad for you oh, okay because um we had ours broken into and they didn't do anything about it right but them two days to come out <laughs> Please. Yeah. Uh, but people know they can get away with it. The, well, they do, and that's the problem. They that's know they can get away with it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, you were talking about the um and ah and thing yes. earlier on. I'm glad that's a good thing, because when I get nervous, I do it a lot. Um, so job interviews are a nightmare. And um, as well, I was told in media studies, you can laugh, I know you will, um, that... If you are doing an interview with someone, don't edit out the um and ahs too much because a it looks real scripted and b it makes them look more human. Maybe that's what the politics try to do. Yes. So it looks like they're making it up. Right. Even though we know no, they're not. Yes, and uh, and to that extent, I think politicians might benefit from people sticking ums and ers in their speeches in order to make it seem more like they were making it up, yeah. rather than just parroting parroting it like a robot. Oh, they could write their own speeches. Well, they, yeah, they'd, I don't think they'd actually go that far, would they? They have people to do that. Oh, would that make them sound silly? Would it make them sound silly? Yeah, if they wrote their own speeches. Well, the, by writing their own speeches, it would imply that they actually believe what they were saying. Yeah. No, they, they got, they, they just the, uh, the mouthpiece, they and, uh, and they have people write what they think for them. I don't think that they realise what they're saying sometimes. They just say it. Well, it's very annoying when you see a politician interviewed on, um, that is one of the reasons why I like Boris Johnson, because he's, he's the sort of person, and, and this is, he's the sort of person that you, that you actually believe what he's, that he believes what he's saying, mm. which is why it seemed odd listening to the, um, the recording of him at the uh, Conservative Party conference, yeah. because what he was saying was obviously scripted. He wasn't making it up off the top of his head, off the top of his head, and that's sort of why it grated on me a little bit. It's it's the first time I've actually heard him uh, read a speech rather than just speak. Yeah, and that... it sounded a bit funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's unusual, I suppose. It made people remember him, <laughs> which is what they were saying, but. Maybe they should take some of that on board. It's just so staged now. It's still the interviews. If you see an interview on TV, they'll say, oh, we want this question on asking. Well, it's a, it, yes, that. what I was going to say was that it is very uh, irritating watching any politician, with the possible exception of uh, Boris Johnson and maybe one or two others, on television being asked a question, because no matter what the question is, and everybody taking part uh, knows it, the director of the programme, the producer of the programme, the person who's doing the interview and the interviewee, they mm. all know that they're not going to answer any question that's put to them. They're simply going to repeat, parrot fashion, what the researchers and their advisers have told them are the points that they must get over on the programme. Yeah, so you can ask them whether they like cheese or not, and their answer will be, well, of course, under the previous uh, Conservative administration, and then they'll go off on whatever the hell it was that they intended to say, uh, regardless yeah, of what the question is. I find media. it incredibly annoying. They're all media chained as well. It's like when you hear them on the news, most of them have been chained on speaking 30 second bits 
so that they can clip it on the news. It's annoying. Um, and most of them, that's what they have always done. You know, I think if you want to be a politician, it should uh, that the desire alone should yeah. prevent you from becoming a politician. It should prevent you from becoming a puppet. Because uh, yeah. cause almost none of them have actually done any work. They've just been a politician all their lives. You know, they went to university yeah. and they were part of the debating society, which to me marks you out as a bit of a swat and a mm. nerd and a Johnny No Mates. And, you know, that's... Uh, it's, 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 as they say, it's show business for ugly people. Mm. It's how um, ugly fat pe uh, men get sex, <laughs> by, by becoming powerful politicians. It wasn't John. always like that, though, was it? I mean, you you got working people. That's how the Labour Party was started off and everything was working. Cross people getting together and people actually believed in what they wanted to do. And it wasn't all staged and you'd get fights and everything. You don't get that now. Belief in politics. Gosh, <laughs> I, I can't remember about that far, Louise. <laughs> Well, you're s what, you're walking us down memory lane. That's what I've been taught in politics. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, this media art just come in handy. I suppose me. so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Louise. All right, Nick. Cheers. Ta-da. This is LBC. LBC ninety-seven point three. Nick Abbott. Shouldn't I have the phone number in it? No, that's our job. That's your job? Yeah. Well, shouldn't you put the phone number in it, then? That one didn't have one. They don't all have them, I'm afraid. None of, none of them have had it so far. I'll do it. Just point at me and I'll do it. I'm a professional. I can stick it in it. In it. Go for it. How do you fancy winning a helicopter flight over London plus a uh, dinner at a top London restaurant for two? Well, you can all next week with Paul Ross, Monday to Thursday afternoons from four to mark the release of the movie And When Did You Last See Your Father in cinemas from October the 5th, which stars Jim Broadbent, Colin Firth, Juliette Stevenson and Gina McKee. It's based on the best-selling memoir by Blake Morrison. Paul wants to know uh, how your dad has inspired you. To let him know, log on now to lbc.co.uk and you could win a helicopter flight for two and a dinner for two at a top London restaurant. That's all next week with Paul Ross on London's LBC 97.3. Oh, right, yeah. Here is Marylebone. Hello, Nigel. Hi there. Yeah, you were talking about this taking crimes into account. Yes. I, I, I'm a sexually solicitor. I don't, I don't do criminal law, but when we trained about criminal law with the training and they told us about it, we, so we said we couldn't believe it to the lecturer and said, well, that means that they're not solving 50% of the crimes in, in London, for instance. They're solving, like, 1% of the crimes. And so what I said is correct. Yeah. And let, well, me, just was, let me just recap to, yeah. for uh, people who have joined us late. What I said earlier on was that phrase that you hear a lot uh, when uh, a criminal is uh, up before a judge and asks for hundreds of crimes to be taken... What's the phrase? Taken into account. Maybe, may, maybe they ask for 50 or 60, you know. Right. Maybe, well, maybe they've done two or three. They might have done two or three. Yeah. But they just lump in all the local crimes as nicking car phones, whatever it is. Yes. And they lump them all in. And unofficially, I mean, uh, we were told that it was quite official. And we were told years ago that, oh, well, that's the way it used to be. And it started happening. But as far as I can, well, most people feel that's the way it still happens. Isn't that so incredible? It's very, it's very depressing, really, because you don't get through statistics. But can I say something about zero tolerance? That's what you were talking about, zero tolerance in London. Yeah. And apparently the way they really cracked it in New York was amazing, is that they realised if a guy's driving along in a car with, with one of his brake lights out, which is an offence or whatever it is, or a couple of other problems with the car, the chances are, apparently, that people who aren't law-abiding citizens they start to sort of take cut corners with everything. And if they stop a car, because, sorry, you, you've got a, you, you, your lights, you're not legal, some of your lights are out, and just check that driver. Where have you come from? Where are you going? Um, look in the boot. Maybe 30% of the time, they've just done a crime or they did a crime yesterday or whatever. Apparently, you know, many cases people have, oh, sorry, I've just done optional. But there's ways of who people... People who jaywalk across the road, you know, really break or break some mind. A shoplifter gets gets caught with one item. Go and look at their home. Maybe yeah. they've got a thousand items in their home. It just so makes perfect sense. That's the easy way. So what you said about if someone's nicked something out of your car, you're going to find it. 
maybe that, that isn't the way that they crack zero, they crack crime in New York. They cracked it by solving the easy crimes, but then looking deeper into those people and who's your neighbors, who are your mates. Well, I can't, not, not, you can't do too much, but you can just look around and they started solving loads of serious crimes by just solving the easy stuff. Right. Yeah, that and makes I perfect sense, a, a because more. because um, one person can be a crime wave. You know, there, there'll be 300 uh, burglaries in yeah. a, a local community, and they're not done by 300 people, they're done by one bloke. Well, exactly. So when they say there's a million crimes in London, there are a million criminals. There may be 10,000 criminals, each doing 100 crimes. Yeah. So, so it's not like all your neighbours are criminals. I always say, well, one in eight of is a criminal here. That's not the case at all. Well, it depends but where you live, Nigel. <laughs> well, where I live, well, we're all... No. Marylebone? Oh, no, you're safe yeah, well, there. we're all on the net, we're No, no, but in all seriousness, um, it, it, that's the way they solved it in New York. There's the, the guys that wash your windscreen, uh, or, and then they jump into the street and slap a windscreen wiper what, on, on your car. Why don't the police go around the plainclothes car to stop the guy? Sorry, where do you live, mate? Can we just have a look around? And um, nine times out of ten, loads of loads of stolen stuff in there. It yeah, it makes look. it makes perfect sense to to you, yeah, me, everyone that's listening to this show, but uh, no one that actually makes uh, a difference. Well, you know. why, why can't the Conservatives, instead of talking about taxing empty aeroplanes, <laughs> the airlines are only going to... Why don't they talk about common sense, logical things like... It seems blindingly things. obvious that they're missing a big trick here by uh, by listening to Zach Goldsmith too much and yeah. uh, well, wanting yeah. to tax Middle England going to park at Waitrose. Now, you're not going to get any votes there, uh, Dave. <laughs> yeah. All right, Nigel, thanks a lot, mate. Cheers. Thank you. Ta-da. So, I was r can you believe that? That that was actually correct? Isn't that shocking? That that phrase, I would like, uh, Your Honour, I would like uh, 200 crimes to be taken into account. That, what that means is the police are just ticking boxes on 200 crimes that they can't be bothered or haven't been able to solve, and, w and which weren't committed by the guy who's in front of the judge claiming that he, well, he'd done them, but it just ticks a box. Oh, well, they, see, there we go. That's 200 crimes solved, and we can put our feet up and have a... Uh, we can enjoy a nice cheroot for the rest of the evening. And he gets, like, half a sentence. Well, he, he won't do any time for those crimes, because that's part of the deal. I see. I can't believe it goes on. It's what they call positive disposal, isn't it? In Is official it? terms, yeah, right. I think so. Well, it's not, it's not very positive for you or me. But, no, that's uh, true. But they're having a, a fine old time. Yeah, very positive for them. Not for us. I'm going to move to New York, I think. <laughs> Don't do it now. Do it in the summer. It'll be absolutely freezing over there for about, about the next four months. On 97. LBC 97.3. Primitive. 0845 6060 Nick Abbott. I really like you. Do you like me? Do you see what I mean about Boris Johnson and doing that speech, uh, though? And I, I bow to no one in my admiration for Boris Johnson. I'm uh, seriously considering uh, voting for him when allowed to do so. I think he's great. However... He's certainly a character, isn't he? Yes, absolutely. Let's be honest. And we need, mo we need more real people. I mean, I, I know he's not any kind of real person that I would uh, hang out with. Probably wouldn't want to know the likes of me. I'm not, you know, one of them Oxbridge types. You can tell that by the way I talk. But you do have a glove box. With a lot used on to. It. That wasn't. Locked. Used to. That used to. Thanks for reminding me. Um, but it just seems as though he's about to say something funny. When he was doing that speech on the uh, on the news, we heard a clip of it. It did seem. I, I just. You just expect him to say something funny. That's, uh, that may be his curse now that he is such a, an amusing chap and he did so very well on Have I Got News for You that you expect everything he s says to be amusing. And when he starts to um, pontificate about gang culture and people getting stabbed and so on, you think, well, there's a joke coming. Yeah, but the thing is, I think it'll wear off very, very quickly his, uh, his like, bubbly um, image, won't it? His bubbly, lovable image. 
Will it? Well, yeah, because he, he'll he have to start talking about things like, you know, gang culture and all that, and I know maybe knife crime in, in the city and, you know, oh, bendy Does buses. He? Oh, ben well, uh, you can get a lot of uh, humour out of bendy buses, believe me. I mean, uh, just the word bendy is good enough. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's going to take the fun out, of that, fun out of him, really, isn't it? Um... Well, Ken Livingstone, who is not uh, known as a funny man, does does um, bring humour to the role. That's because he's not funny. Unintentionally, probably. No, no, not unintentionally, intentionally. I mean, the unintentional part is why he speaks like that, very annoyingly. <laughs> Can he help that? <laughs> no, that's the unintentional funny part. Right. But he is, he, he can be uh, amusing. What, when? When? Well, I can't pick a moment from time to tell you to go back and listen to this, that or the other, but he is. Ken Livingston can be funny. Really? I've, ne I've never, uh, noted myself laughing out loud at him, at anything he's ever said. Well, what do you laugh out loud at? I bet there's precious little that makes you laugh out loud. I don't, I don't mean that as an insult to you, but, you know, generally, things that make us laugh out loud would be on television, usually, yeah. right? Or on the radio, perhaps. Yeah. Um, mm. and, and what would actually make you laugh out loud? There's, there's precious little that makes me laugh out loud, and it's usually the same thing that I'm, I'm, I'm watching for about the tenth time. You know, uh, the same sitcom that I, I know so well, I can virtually speak it along with the actors. The Simpsons? Although there's a new thing that I saw about five seconds of, uh, every now and again you'll see in the paper, oh, this new sitcom, it's come from America, Australia, wherever, uh, v very rarely Britain that is, uh, oh, it's just the very thing, and uh, and I dial it up and it's always rubbish. Uh, but they, there's something from Australia that was called The Chronicles of Something or Other, and I watched the first about 30 seconds of it yeah. uh, before I came out tonight, and I thought, ooh, I'm, I'm actually going to save this. In fact, I'm going to series link it to um, get the rest of the series. That's a big commitment. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a very, it's, it's a limited hard drive, <laughs> and it's very dear to me, <laughs> so it better be good. But it looked, uh, I thought, oh, well, this has got actual promise. You know what? It might be, uh, funny. You remember funny, don't you? No. No. Did you laugh out loud within the first 30 seconds? Um, no, but I thought, oh, there might be laughs coming. Oh. You see, now, it... But, uh, no, that's, that's a good thing. I can not, I can make my mind up about something within 10 seconds, usually. Right, but it's got potential, is it? Yes, absolutely, yeah. Mm. The chronicles of something or other. Well, I hope for your sake and for your hard drive's sake, yeah. okay, you know, it's worth it. Me too. Good luck. I'm hoping that the new season of uh, Prison Break is worth it as well, because uh, on on the basis of the first uh, program, I'm not sure. What the? What, have you? Uh, hang on. What what series? Prison are you Prison Break. To? Yeah. Three. Start of three. Oh uh, right. Yeah. I've almost got to the end of season two, so don't oh, right. spoil it. Oh well. At the end, <gasps> <laughs> Bambi's mother gets shot. Here's Mayfair. Hello, Adam. Hello, Nick. How are you doing? All right. Thanks. Great show. You're doing as usual. Keep up the good work. Cheers, mate. Um, was it 20 years since you went to Paris? You say. Yeah. You? Changed now, apart from the city itself, the financial district. Oh, uh, the financial district is absolutely brand new. Yeah, I, I saw it from afar. Uh, next time I go to Paris, I'd like to go up. <coughs> excuse me, the uh, La Défense, the uh, the big square arch. Yes, and the thing is, you know, the cafes, that the whole cultural thing. I know we have banter with the French, but it is a it's a fantastic place to go. Your colleague made a good point about the police. You actually know where you stand with these people. You know if you're going to go for a night out in the back of your mind, once you set eyes on these, you're not going to mess with them. Because they do look like military, you wouldn't know they're police. That's, yeah, that's, uh, it, and, it was a bit of a surprise, actually. And even the police women, they look like they stepped out of the Vogue magazine. I mean, they, they all seem fit, switched on. I'm sure they're, they're helpful in that, but they're there to do a job. And if there's a problem in a restaurant or a club, they'll be there in force. The, the, you, you mentioned a word there that hadn't occurred to me, but uh, you know what? Yeah. They do look fit. They look sort of army trained fit, whereas our policemen, not so much. No, we, we, we obviously have the bobbies, we have the special units, we have the CID guys who, well, from life on Mars, they're not like that now, but you know, it's, um, that's one, that, that you've got to keep the community thing, I think, but I think you've got to have a, you don't cross the line. And it's the same if you go to the South of France. They might not wear ties and wear open neck shirts. They're super fit and they're switched on and, and they know the scene there. And if there's a problem in the restaurant, they'll, they'll just drag you up by, by your head and you won't mess about again. <laughs> it's, uh, but it's, it, it's a great city and with the rugby world cup going on, I mean, the whole world seems to be over there at the moment, doesn't it? And it well, uh, that's what I was told, but you know what? I wondered, I did nothing but walk around the centre of Paris. I didn't see 
an, uh, a hint of the Rugby World Cup, really? there was other no than that there was a big uh, rugby ball um, uh, uh, hanging yeah. beneath Everything the uh, Eiffel Tower. Is that marketplace still going in the centre, under the railway, subway section? You know where they, they shot a film, a car chase? I can't think of the film, it was shot in Paris, and it was under the subway and it seemed to go on forever. And there was always a big market there once a week. Do you mean the French Connection? Yeah, that's the one, yeah. That wasn't in Paris. <laughs> wasn't it? It looked like Paris. <laughs> <laughs> that's where it made looked thick. But no, it's, uh... I don't know if it's still going. It was a very long market, um, place, and it was... It seemed to go on for miles, this place. Right, I don't know about that. Hens, chickens, all sorts of things <laughs> running around. Oh, bound to be, yeah. <laughs> Even the, um, the, Mac the sound effects are great. Even the McDonald's looks classy, doesn't it? I looked into McDonald's. Well, the, the, the thing that I noticed, apart from the, the, that everyone was really thin over there, and I, w I seemed to be the only person who was eating, everyone else was just smoking and having, uh, espresso. And there's no women sitting there with their thongs hanging out everywhere, and it's totally... <laughs> well, that's another interesting thing as well. I, 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 I went through the whole four days, and I, I don't think I saw a single person on a mobile phone. Here, in this, in, in London, you can't walk four yards without seeing a person on a mobile phone. People were actually speaking to each other. What? <laughs> Communication. Yeah, that's right. Hum human in in that interaction, but even the rush hour is calm in Paris. Well, the the other thing I noticed was that they, they don't seem to have the traffic problem. Although I can't I can't um, uh, extrapolate from where I was staying to the whole of Paris because where I was staying, as I say, it was like a very sort of upmarket place where it was nothing but giant boulevards and great open spaces and yeah. so the traffic that they did have seemed very light because the the roads were so very big and not open the best drivers to be honest are they <laughs> i don't know <laughs> but they didn't hit me horn, a lot of horns going on did you enjoy your euro experience though you said on the train which itself is i yeah i would um i would seriously consider going on the euro not just to go to france but just to sit on the train and no, get and get a meal <laughs> it, it, it is <laughs> what did you think of that the, uh, the, the whole service on the year round. I thought it was great. I thought it was exceptionally good. I can't wait to go again. Would you live there? On the if train? Comes, no. In Paris, if push comes to sh if, if you could afford to live there and work in London, say a couple of days a week, Yeah. would you do that? Uh, no. no. I think I would prefer London. Yeah, you can't beat the evening standard, the dark evening, the whole thing. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, like, that's right. I would choose London because of the evening standard. Yeah. <laughs> the evening st and the free papers at Hammersmith Broadway, which looks like a tip by the time they're finished. That's right. I think but that those things should be banned. I think that, um, that, uh, Boris, bouncing Boris Johnson should actually ban those things. Have you done the South of France, Monaco, Nice? I did, uh, I've done Nice, yeah. You don't need to be rich. You, you're as good as anyone to sit there by the cafe and have a coffee. I I go over there. You mean I don't need to be rich? You don't need to be rich to go there, do you, really? If you no, it helps, though. <laughs> yeah, you need a few pounds in your back pocket, but yeah. you, 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 amazingly, you can get talking to over there, and you just, if you're a sociable kind of person, you are, yeah, it's great. Well, I think that's the same with everywhere. I mean, there's, uh, I don't know anything about the Bible, but I think that what, uh, uh, there's a, a parable in the Bible, or... I'm already yeah. on shaky ground, but they're, they're, oh, yeah. the, the old story of uh, a man is coming from a village and going to another village and meets uh, um, uh, another man coming, the, doing the opposite journey and asks, what are the people like in the next village? Uh -huh. And the man says, well, what did you think of the people in the village that you just come from? He said, oh, I thought they were terrible. He said, well, you'll probably find that they're terrible in this village here. So it very much depends on uh, who you are, yeah. What I a mean, fantastic, fight. yeah, that's, that, that's worth remembering. That's yeah, worth write that down, Adam. That is excellent, actually. Oh, right. Is that from the top of your head, or did you have that knowledge from a young age? Um, I don't know. I heard it somewhere. It was probably on TV. Oh, great. And uh, try Brussels as well, if you get a chance. Brussels is boring. Boring. Brussels Green. is so you can, dull. You can eat your dinner off the floor. Um, well. They're fascinating, some of these places, because, I mean, yeah. you know, if you go to Brussels, they've got very old architecture there. And you well, they've got one that. square that's um, an absolutely fantastic square, but that's yeah. it. Mind you, it was about 20 years since I was in Brussels, and they seemed to be building it at the time, so maybe I yeah, should okay. go and take a peek again. It's great. Anyway, keep up the good work. Thanks, Enjoy Adam. Yeah. Cheers. Ta-da. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, the, uh, the fast food thing. Everyone in Paris seemed to be particularly thin, in much the same way as everyone in London is particularly fat. Hmm. By which I mean fat. Do you think we're getting like the Americans? Not getting. Got. Huh. 
Really? Yeah, absolutely. It's something like um, the vast majority of people in this country are now not just fat, not just overweight. It's the O word, obese. It's something like sixty percent. It's it's some staggering figure like that. Sixty percent. Something like that. And you know what? And you know not what. You know why? <laughs> exactly. On. Fast food, which I found a, a noticeable lack of in Paris. Uh, hence, they're all very thin, like whip it thin. But the thing is, you know. The Mind you, I was saying, as I said, in the in the fashion district. So mm -hmm. I might have just been clapping my eyes on su supermodels strutting to work. Yeah, maybe, you know, it all depends on where you are, isn't it? But, you know, the, th the fact that we live in, you know, a big city, you know, there's going to be lots of fast food joints around and, you know, that's going to have an effect, isn't no, it? No, that's, but that's not true. In Paris, there was a singular lack of them. I saw one McDonald's in the four days that I was there and I did nothing but walk everywhere. Right. I, what, were, were there ever, like, fast no. food? No. Mm. What they have there are cafes where people sit and eat right. slowly rather than taking something and then going and eating it in the street or you know wherever they uh, or at their work desk or in, slow in eating, their car <laughs> slow life like Italy I challenge you to go to uh, the small town Italy and and find a f fast food joint in Italy they're all thin as well it's just us the people that are hooked on hamburgers and uh, shakes and crucially soda like they say it in america without mentioning any brand names your cola products is the thing that they stick in cola products and lemonade and all of that fizzy stuff that we um you know, wash down our hamburgers with that's the thing that's killing you and it's fructose i think it's the that's the sugar. actual uh, mm -hmm. no not sugar fructose i think there's some sort of chemical makeup in fructose that actually speeds the um the uh, turning of whatever you eat into fat right it clogs you up and you'll die because of it it's the actual sugary fizzy drinks that are working in combination with the crap that you eat yeah to make uh, a double jeopardy but is it our fault because of course it is no, well no because if we if we're leading like fast-paced lives then we need some food on the go and you know fast food joints cater for that need surely and <laughs> well why don't you do what i do i make a sandwich at, at home it's I, it costs a fraction of the price of buying it in a shop it's made of much better ingredients and i know where it's been I haven't got time. I got up too late. Oh, what rubbish! Of course you kept. Of course, uh, today I had a banana sandwich, which took about ten seconds to make. You, you butter two slices of bread, stick it in a bag, and uh, take a banana with you, and then mash it in it in it when you're ready to eat it. But it hasn't got any fructose in uh, it. Well, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> have, a, a have a glass of milk, and uh, you'll be uh, ready to go. Oh God, sounds well, boy. And then you'll be uh, the, the the very uh, picture of health. Mm. If indeed very miserable like me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, here's a uh, call in the city. Hello, Mark. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. Nick, um, your uh, explanation on your offences taken into account as you labelled them. Yeah. It's already boring. Um, offences taken into consideration and um, it's, they, they can't just, uh, you know, they, they, they can't just uh, be put down to somebody if that somebody doesn't know anything about the actual circumstances of the offence. And you're saying this in, uh, in uh, what capacity? Uh, X capacity. Having been uh, in that situation many times, putting them to people who, uh, who may or may not have actually committed them. So you're saying you're an ex-policeman? Yes, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm ex-police, yeah. Right. But then why did the, uh, why did the chap uh, just before uh, agree with me? Uh, to be honest with you, I wasn't listening at that time, Nick. Right. Um, but they can't, you know, at the end of the day, what you'll do is you, 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 they've, they've caught somebody for doing something. They've then got a list of other offences of a similar nature that they want to put to that somebody. Um, that somebody is not going to be able to have them taken into consideration unless they know something about the circumstances of those offences. You know what, Mark? Um, you're probably a very nice man, and you, um, uh, fr from your experience, that might be true. But I don't believe that that's the uh, that that's the the general 
position. I think that they do put it, um, they say, you know, well, they'll go lightly on you if you just to say you did these 200, 300 other crimes, because it will, um, it, it will enable us to meet our government targets. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was easy. <laughs> All right, thanks, Mark. All right, bye. Cheers, ta-da. Huh, I thought I was going to get much more of an argument than that, which kind of makes me feel that I'm right. You'll have to agree to disagree. Yeah, I suppose so, yeah. <sighs> right. Right what? I don't know. You tell me. Police officers have been warned not to hold out a hand to drowning swimmers. This is after the, um... Those two, um, uh, what do they call them? Noddy policemen? They're not, they're not real police? What oh, do they call them? Uh, oh, PCOs. PCOs. Yes. Community support, support officers. officers. Yeah. They don't get paid, do they? They do. No, they don't. They, they do. I don't think so. Yeah, because I see adverts on the tube. That you're, you're thinking of special constables who don't get paid. PCSOs do. Well, what's the difference between a sp So they've got three different types of policemen? Yeah. Not including the traffic police? Hang on. The special constables are the, the voluntary police, That's aren't they? it, yeah. They just normally do weekends, a bit like the equivalent of sort of the, the TA, even though you do get paid for that. So, I'm stunned this is news to me. So, there's the community support officers. Yeah, yeah. they right. get paid. They're on the salary. Really? Yes. Yeah. But they can't actually do anything. No. They can't arrest someone or chase someone or well, investigate anything I think they can or detain save you. someone or anything. Yeah, I think they can detain well, you. Well, I can detain someone. <laughs> yeah, but, but they have an official sort of a, a um, period jacket. that they can... Uh, they have well, an official got jacket. They have yeah. permission to chit-chat to people in the street. Right. Yes. If, they, if they're really hot. Yes. Yeah, well... <laughs> 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 So there's those that they get paid that they're, they're the not real police. E yes. Yeah. Right. So they they get paid for just wandering around in a luminous jacket. Correct. If the thinking being that they will prevent crimes from happening in their immediate vicinity because crims will think they're policemen by their bright yellow uh, clothing. Yeah, because they won't be able to read the fact that they say police community support. It's, it's officer. actually says polite, not police. Polite. <laughs> yeah. And always... Be polite! Be polite. Of course. Um, and then there's the what? The... The, the, f the ones who do it for free? Yeah, yeah. special, special constables. Well, well, you'd have to be. There's a... There's <laughs> adverts on the... There's adverts on the tube for that as well. Yeah, you know, there is. You yeah, can for, volunteer... Enticed by free travel, isn't it, normally? Is it free travel? Yeah, you give up something like 11 hours and then I think you get sort of free travel or there's, there's some sort of bargaining. It's, that's that's well. got to be the worst deal ever. You get free travel for 11 hours. You, it, it's well, something then, like that. Well, it's about 90p a bus fare now. Well, it's like... Yeah, you do two days a month, I think it is. Yeah, it is something like two that. Two shifts a month. And if the... If the... The, the not real police who get paid can't do anything. Yes. What do the not real police who don't get paid well, get to do? I read the advert, and the volunteer police seem to have more power than the actual uh, the community support officers. Can they shoot people? No, but it says you will be trained as a full policeman. Right. And you'll have the like the full rights as a policeman as well. So they With obviously the right not to get paid. Well, that's the only right that they're giving well, up. That's insane. It is to not get paid for throwing yourself in a place of d where uh, where normal people, not normal, where ordinary uh, members of the public are fleeing in the opposite direction, you would be uh, running against the tide to where the trouble is for nothing. Well, I think the other enticement is that uh, it is a stepping stone if you want to get into the regular police force because obviously that is quite competitive is if it? you want to do it. Yeah. It's very competitive. It's very competitive, yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? I thought there was a lack of them. Well, well this I mean, you don't ever see them. I That's why it's competitive. Yeah. Because they've cut back on their numbers. I think the, really. the fitness training to get into the police is quite hard. No, it can't be. When yeah. was the last time we saw a fit policeman? No offence, but... Uh, perhaps it's the uniform. I, I'm sure that the uniform doesn't do them any favours. The great fat belt that they wear makes them all walk waddle-like. In France, it was very noticeable that all the police looked super fit and ready for action. In this country, on the other hand, the police look a bit... comical. I mean, they just do. <laughs> it's the uniform. You can't get away from it. And they do look a bit... Podgy. The problem with our uniform, uh, I've noticed in the last few years, is that 
Our police don't tend to wear their ties as much anymore. It's all open collar now, isn't it? Have you noticed that? Well, I, I, I They don't wear ties. I can't really recall having seen policemen wandering around very much. You know what, You only ever see them in cars. They, they have, you know, their bulletproof vests on. Yeah. But just then open collar shirts. You know, there's there's a company that's producing school uniforms now in uh, bulletproof and stab proof material. No, there isn't. <laughs> <laughs> What? Absolutely, yeah. In this country? A Kevlar school blazer, yeah. They can't make them fast enough. Brilliant. That's because that whole, uh, 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 uh crime and, uh, concentrating on crime and the causes of crime is going so very well. Thanks a lot, Tone. <laughs> Cheers, Tone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you did a great job. We've forgotten about him so very quickly. I mean, he's not been out of the job uh, barely a month. And, uh, and nobody can remember even what he looks like. Well, the press seem to have left him alone, haven't they? Uh, completely. And, you know, I... Uh, That's so, so he can write his book. Maybe. Do you think he's got some sort of deal, then, with the press, that, you know, once I, I'm ex-Prime Minister, you have to leave me alone for six months? <laughs> no. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and, and then he'll give him, a, like, a, an exclusive interview in six months' time. Oh, yeah, they'll, they'll be uh, hanging on his every word. No, I wouldn't think so, no. They just don't seem to be... I thought he was going to go and sort out the Middle East, just, 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 despite the fact that, that, that uh, half of the people in the Middle East want to kill him. <laughs> it's very brave of him. Yeah. Maybe he's going to be a special constable out there. <laughs> Eleven hours a week. <laughs> huh, Eleven hours a week. Imagine how much TV you'd have to give up. Well... I don't understand. It, well, it's just going to cost you, isn't it? I you mean, know, the TA. I sort of get the TA because it's uh, you know it's exciting and it's yomping and uh, you get to drive a tank. Maybe I don't really know, uh, and, and all of that jazz. It's, you know, it's in the army, da, 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 da. <laughs> in the navy, wasn't it? Really? Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll substitute in the army. So I sort of get that, because it's, you know, it's what you play with uh, as a kid, you know, you have little army games. Sure. Police, not so much. Well, I don't, I, uh, I don't know, what I don't get is it, surely you're going to be out of pocket if you become a special constable, because, yes. you, you know, you, you, you have could, to... You could be earning in that time. Unless, of course, you go to things like football matches, in which case you might see it as a cheap way of actually getting into a ground. That's true. Yeah, you're not allowed to just stage. loll about watching the game, are you? are supposed to be like a security guard at a concert, watch the crowd. Indeed, but most of them do. But you have to pay your travel to get to where you're working, and you have to get home again, and you probably have to wash your shirt. <laughs> it's all going to cost, isn't it? Wash your shirt. <laughs> well, you, you can't go to work with a dirty shirt. No, quite. <laughs> I, I completely agree. Especially if you're in the force. Now, I bow to no one, by the way. Let there be no mistake. Uh, my, um, uh, uh, oh, blimey, my mind uh -oh. just ground uh -oh. to uh -oh. a halt. Too many ideas at once. Fill it, yeah. fill it with an um and It was a log jam. One thought per link. I know. <laughs> fill it with an um and <laughs> Um... Uh, in my, uh, uh, I can't think of the word. Wonderment. That's not the word, but that's the only one that seems to be coming to me now. When was the last time you heard wonderment in a sentence? Never, I would guess. I'm, uh, I bow to no one in my wonderment of the police. I'm not sure that's even a word. No, it is. I just totally made it up. So I'm not getting at the police. I just, I, I guess I'm getting, and this is uh, about me more than anybody else, people who do things for free. When it comes to sport or movies, where do you stand? LBC 97.3 0845 oh, 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 <laughs> Nick Abbott Here are the studio calls flashing up on the indicator Uh, Derbyshire, hello Alan Good evening Nick, how are you? Alright, thanks Um, sorry to see Lucy go the other night, but... Oh well yeah. Bye-bye, Lucy. Bye-bye, Lucy. Lucy. Yeah. She yeah. left, and I said, um, I tried, I said... Oh, no, that's got too long an intro. I said... Oh. That's got too long an intro. What did you just say? Get out. <laughs> no, I said, please don't go. All right. Don't go away. Don't go away. Right, have you done with that? Yep. <laughs> right, splendid. Decent comedy. You sort of, you like, um, Seinfeld, Third Rock from the Sun, things like that, don't you? Mm-hmm. No, not uh, Seinfeld. Not Seinfeld. Uh, Larry Sanders? Yes, very much so. Right. You should really try Sledgehammer. What's that? 
Um, David Raquel, is it? Um, he's a cop obsessed with his gun. It's really, really funny. What channel's it on? Um, it does appear on Bravo from time to time. Bravo's well, an odd channel. I do channel, believe, I... actually, you've been sent it by aid. You've got to watch it. Oh, right. Okay, I will. Okay, thanks a lot, anyway. <laughs> <All> right, <laughs> that was quick. How about Totteridge? Hello, Ellie. Hello. Ellie. Um, I was just calling up just to let you know that I volunteered to be a special. A special? A special policewoman. Right. And, um, because you were, I don't know, it was, sounded like nobody didn't know very much about it, so I thought I'd just call and tell you. Okay. So what made you, uh, join up? Um, I just wanted to be a bit community-spirited, really, and it just sounded interesting, and you learnt about law and criminal acts, and, um, they gave you a good training, but I just found out that I'm pregnant, so, um, unfortunately I can't go through with it, but they tell, did tell me that probably in about a year or so I can try again, so... So this is the part that I don't understand. You wanted to be now. Uh, it's, it's almost like a throwback to um, a, a bygone age that didn't exist. You wanted to be community um, spirited. I mean, you can choose. I mean, they they, they recommend that you don't be um, a police officer in your own sort of area because obviously, if you're in Sainsbury and you've arrested somebody and they see you, there could be a bit of trouble. So you can choose um, sort of one of three areas, and then when you have your interview and everything, and you pass through. Um, then you can go there. Criminals do shop in other supermarkets. Well, by the it way. is true, but this is just my. I'm just yeah. trying to make a little bit of an analogy to a point. But but you have a very good training. It's a sort of 17 weeks, but um, every Sunday and um, uh, and well. I, I thought that it would be something interesting to do. Well, yeah, there was, uh, there'd be no question about that. Uh, what about the health and safety thing, uh, which is, uh, I, I was going to start going into uh, just before the break. You know, well, because of these... You're protecting yourself and things like that. Yeah, you're not, you, you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. What, what kind of um, advice do they give you? Well, uh, well, unfortunately, um, I only just found out that I'm pregnant, so I was just about to start doing my 17 weeks, so I stopped, so I can't actually right, okay. comment on that, so... But I'm pregnant all thanks to Paul Ross, I have to say. Really? Does he know? Well, I was going to call and tell him because then he just found out, but um, it was because of him about two and a half years ago that I met my my uh, intended, and um, and I'm going to have a baby. Oh. Yeah. Well, it all worked out fine in the end. It did. It did. But but specials are great people. I think everybody should do it. Paul Ross's I mean, life, by the way, just flashed before his eyes. <laughs> oh, dear, I can imagine. <laughs> well, no, Jackie's very lovely, I'm sure. So, uh, but, um, I, I, but I think it's something that everybody should do, really. I mean, now you get free travel. They also pay for your cup of coffee if that's what you want in your sandwich. Coffee? Really? Yeah, oh, you well, your, you should have said. Yeah, exactly. And you get your made-to-measure suit and your boots and things like it's that. It's actually made-to-measure? Yeah. Are you kidding? Well, because everybody's slightly different size, so... Well, I know, but the, but Giorgio Armani sells stuff mm. off the rack that seems well, to fit. Also, well, but, but that's one of the special days that you have after you've gone through all your training and your your bits and pieces. You go and have your... You're going to be measured for your, um, officers as well. Right. Your uniform, yeah, so... And, and it still f seems to fit like that. <laughs> well, I hope so. Better just breathe in with your magic pants on. I'm sure yeah. Fine. Huh. All right, well, thanks a lot, Ellie. All right, take care. Cheers, ta-da. Bye. Um, well, I was going to start mentioning, uh, this, this health and safety thing. Police officers have been warned not to hold out a hand to drowning swimmers and to think twice before throwing a life belt. Right. Think about that. They've been thought to think twice before throwing a life belt. Not taking all their clothes off and leaping in to, uh, uh swirling eddy to, uh, yank somebody up from the bottom of the, uh, from a pit. But to think twice before throwing a life belt... Health and safety rules issued by one force which state that an officer on the bank of a lake or river should not offer help to a struggling non-swimmer uh, raise fresh concerns over risk-averse culture in the emergency services. Even a life belt must not be thrown without a, quote, dynamic risk assessment being carried out. What's that? <laughs> Where possible, rescues should be left to other emergency services. Um... The extraordinary instructions were issued by Devon and Cornwall Constabulary, were, which have a lot of water. They do. Being surrounded by it. In another case revealed uh, lately, two Dorset police officers carrying life-saving equipment were ordered not to board a lifeboat to reach a suspected heart attack victim because they were not trained in sea survival. How, how deep was this lifeboat? How deep? Yeah. What do you mean? Well, how deep in the water was this lifeboat? No, the, the lifeboat was floating on the water. Right. But is it, does it, you know, if it was in a little shallow end of the, of the sea, then it doesn't matter, does it? Well, I wouldn't have thought it mattered at all, because it's a lifeboat. <laughs> it's, being, it's being manned by lifeboat men. 
<laughs> Police watchdogs are now calling for an overhaul of health and safety rules. Uh, uh, this whole health and safety thing has just got completely out of hand, isn't it? We've got- we've actually gone completely insane. Who's in charge of health and safety? A row erupted over two police- it's probably Jack A. A row erupted over uh, Jackie and Ed. Ed Balls. Seriously, mate, call yourself Edward. <laughs> no one can take you seriously. <laughs> uh, a row erupted over two police staff who stood uh, by while a, uh, the ten-year-old Jordan Lyon drowned in a lake in Wigan. Their inaction was defended by Greater Manchester Police, which said that they were right not to intervene as they had not been trained in water rescue. Oh, well. Well, let's not get into that, but I mean, seriously, if, uh, if you were st st standing on the bank and a kid was drowning, whether you'd been trained or not, you think you'd just leap in anyway, right? I don't understand what a dynamic risk assessment Nobody, is. Nobody, well, neither do I. Health and safety advisors say emergency service personnel should avoid acting on instinct to save lives. See, that's what I thought that they were partly there for. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they don't bother to investigate over 50% of the crimes that are committed. So what are they actually there for? To reassure people? To give them crime numbers. Right. On the phone. The thing is, you can't, that, you can't predict every, uh, you know, scenario, situation that the police are going to end, you know, find themselves in sometimes. And so, you know, having them carry out risk assessments every single the time they come across a brand new situation they've never come across before, then it's, you know... Insane. Yeah. Um, health and safety advisors say emergency service personnel should avoid acting on instinct to save lives, a situation termed red mist, and instead consider all options, including that of doing nothing. <laughs> right. Uh, officers in one police force, Staffordshire, are told in their training that red mist is dynamite risk assessment's worst enemy. They are taught that high-risk areas include chasing suspects. Right. <laughs> That's good. Very dangerous. Don't do it. Domestic incidents, road accidents, searching people, or any situation involving fire or water. So, which cuts out, out everything! <laughs> In Dorset, uh, in the Dorset case, police were called to a fight on a yacht in which initial reports suggested that someone had suffered a heart attack. The Swanage lifeboat offered to take police to the scene, but when two police officers turned up at the jetty with a defibrillator after 15 minutes, they were instructed via radio not to board the boat. A lifeboatman said uh, they told us they couldn't come because they hadn't done a sea survival course. They were made to look pathetic. What a mad world. Correct. Are you making this up? No, this is absolutely true. This happened. If you are, are on a, a, a yacht, mm. uh, visible to the shore, and uh, the lifeboat crew, trained in saving people at sea, were to send you over to the yacht to save someone's life who was having a heart attack at that moment, and you were that person, gasping for breath, clutching your chest, how, how put out do you think you would be <laughs> if the police wouldn't come because they weren't trained in surviving at sea? And you could just see him there on the dock. Yes. Just so, <laughs> so the, their instructions are, um, if you're in trouble, they have to let you die in case it would um, uh, breach health and safety rules. Vandals, uh, here's another example, Vandals spent two days daubing graffiti on a derelict building in Bristol using ladders and 15-foot rollers after police decided it was unsafe to enter. So they just gave them carte blanche. They could just do anything they want because uh, the police officers considered it was unsafe. <laughs> Foot patrols were withdrawn from the hamlet of uh, Cerny Wick in Gloucestershire because its narrow lanes have no pavements. <sighs> Uh, a new fire station in Plymouth and Devon was built without a traditional pole. Firefighters used stairs instead to avoid the risk of hand or ankle injuries. Uh, they're right. We have gone completely insane. Eltham. Emma. Hello. Hello, Emma. Hello, is that Nick? Yes, Emma. Sorry, I was just brushing my teeth. I've been on the phone waiting for ages. Oh. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm all right. Good, good. I wanted to talk to you about the fat nation. Do you spend at least three minutes brushing your teeth? 
Um, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a no, isn't it? I probably spent about 30 seconds brushing them yeah. just now, because you interrupted me brushing them. Sorry about that. But I'd rather talk to you, because I can finish off brushing afterwards. Right. You want to get yourself one of those, uh, motorised toothbrushes? Oh, it They're is great. a motorised. It is one. Oh, right. It's a sonic toothbrush. Well, doesn't it beep when you've had three minutes? No, it's not quite that advanced. Right. Well, you want to time yourself. <laughs> Or maybe I should take a stopwatch and bath her every Well, time. you know what, Emma, you can be, um, you can be, uh, uh, carefree about it, but once they start yanking your teeth out your face, then you'll wish that you'd brushed for longer. Don't. You're starting to sound like my boyfriend. <laughs> He's always saying to me about how my teeth are going to fall out. With well, it, you know, there you go. Years. You should listen to your boyfriend more. Eat, eat less sugar and stop being a fatty, fat, fat, fat. See? It's true, this nation is becoming obscenely overweight every everywhere I look around. Not becoming, become. Mm, has become. become. True. Yeah. We're getting more like the Americans. We've become like the Americans. We have. We're, be we're becoming worse than the Americans because this is such a small country, you just see it everywhere. <laughs> so we'll run out of space, do you mean? <laughs> well, we probably will run out of space eventually. <laughs> The the the, um, the graveyards and things won't be able to put up with. There's no there's, actually there's no excuse for it because we have uh, the Americans didn't see this coming because they were the first country for the to uh, to this for this to happen too. Mm. We saw it coming and we still went ahead and did it and and acted um, in, in the manner that has made us uh, who we are anyway. We we knew what was coming and we went ahead and did it anyway. It's all about money though, isn't it? How do you mean? At the end of the day, the fast food companies, they want to make money. Yeah. And fast food is generally cheaper than proper food. No, you I'm, no, I'm going to have to stop you there, Emma. If you want a journey... Uh, no, I'm going to have to stop you there. You need something to eat. No, no, what no, no, no. cheap? Well, you can so take an apple up. and a banana with you. An apple and a banana is not going to fill you up. Well, neither is um, a, a super whopper hamburger. Uh, it's not going to fill you up either. It's just a, a wad of it's grease. It's going to fill you up for ten minutes until you get home and have another dinner. Yes. That's what it's going to do. I As would an you. apple and a banana. Get yourself a bag of nuts, Emma. I totally agree with you. I think that this country is becoming seriously fat, but I think it's because everyone's so lazy that they just... They don't care. They just want something that's quick and easy rather than cooking themselves a nice meal, which is probably, if they were at home, it's going to take, if not the same amount of time to prepare and cook, than some greasy burger. It's a really weird... This, every time you think about what's go, what goes on in this country, it's really bizarre. You, you can't uh, twin t any two facts that you know about this country. One fact is that we are absolutely obsessed with cookery shows. They're yeah, always uh, top of the charts with, uh, with the viewers. Yet... No one cooks. Well, I I, I watched um, a cookery show last week that was on one of these morning television programmes, and it was how to cook something in, like, four minutes that was really tasty and it was yeah. really simple. And I came and I home and I cooked it, and it took, like, five minutes. What was it? Was it? really nice. It was chicken schnitzel. It was basically just grilled chicken. <laughs> it, it was a what? Streaky bacon. Chicken schnitzel. Chicken schnitzel. Schnitzel. Oh. Bit, of, bit of white wine and some salad. Oh, that and sounds... It was really... It was lovely. Sounds was a delight. Tasty. <laughs> it, filled me, <laughs> it filled me up and satisfied me more than a greasy burger See? with. And, you know, no breakouts in the morning. Yeah. But it is, it's just about, if you're, if you're lazy and you can't be bothered to cook, then people will just grab a hamburger. But I think that part of the, the reason, and you hit on it I, almost without knowing it earlier on, was, uh, was when you said uh, something in the order of, um... Oh, I can't remember what you said now, but it, but but it's <laughs> it's attention. that it's um it's not my fault. It's like I can't I can't help it. It's nothing I do about it. It's, you know, it's <laughs> like that when I got here. You know, it's it's like no one takes responsibility for their own actions. No, they don't at all anymore. They blame they blame everyone else. It's right? always somebody else's fault. Yeah, that's true. It is. It is always somebody else's fault because they they're led into temptation. The temptation's put there for them. And they think, oh well, if they're going to tempt me with this, then I may as well eat it. It's yeah. their fault. Like I, I have, I, I am as a jelly and have no um, self-control at all. I have some self-control. No, I'm not talking about you. <laughs> I'm not talking. I'm just talking you. about the population in general. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Well, there needs to be more exercise. There needs to be free gym memberships. Or why don't people just go to the park, walk the dog, walk your wobbly bottom round a park once in a exactly. while? Exactly. So exactly. whose fault will it be when all your teeth fall out, Emma? Mine. See? <laughs> I need to stay off the sweets. <laughs> yeah. Get off I the like sweets and, uh, and get onto the nuts. Yeah, well, I'm allergic to nuts, you see. 
allergic. Yeah. Right, well, uh, I would leave the nuts alone then. Caution, will, may contain nuts. Mm. That's what you'll find written on a bag of nuts. For health and safety reasons. For health and safety reasons. But I, I do make sure I brush my teeth every day. Yeah, for a couple of seconds a day, yeah. No, for at least a minute. A okay, minute? Maybe not three minutes. Right. At least a minute, sometimes two. Depends how much time I've got. It's usually the last thing I do before I leave the house. But I smoke. Right, now, you, you almost uh, got <laughs> out of this conversation on a positive note, and then you just <laughs> dug yourself a giant hole there again. Maybe I wanted to dig myself a hole. Maybe I did. Don't smoke, it ruins your teeth. Uh, yeah, and, and it ruins everything it passes, the teeth being the first thing, yeah. It does. Me and my significant other half were just talking about our quick date today. We're going to do it together. You're what? Mm. My, me and my significant other half, my yeah. boyfriend, have been discussing our quit date for smoking. When we're oh, quit smoking. date. Quick. I thought you said quick date. Like, what's that? Easily, easily Skipping confused. dinner. Skipping dinner, <laughs> a, qu a quick date. Getting straight to it, yeah. <laughs> straight to the booze. <laughs> All right, well, um, yeah, just, uh, just do it. Like the advert says, Emma, just do it. Uh, more milk. Yeah, more milk, less fags, yeah. Semi-skimmed, not full fat. Oh, I don't know. You know, I, <laughs> I I had skimmed milk for about the last ten years, and the boys through there, are, you're, he's curling his lip, is Elliot. It's like white water, isn't it? And um, and then I and then I read um, a thing in a paper that said, you know what, you should actually drink full fat milk because the fat content is uh, is also pretty much negligible, but all the goodness that's in um, uh, milk is taken out when they um, skim it. Skim it? Don't they just take the fat layer off the top? Well, I don't know, but you'd have to think that there's uh, there's certain things in the fat that are actually good for you. I suppose. There are good fats. You know, in, in much the same way as eating a, a vitamin pill is not going to get you all of the nutrients that you would have got had you eaten an apple and an orange and, uh, you know, a basket of vegetables. It might look chemically the same, but there's things in there that we don't know and haven't identified well, that, uh, that you won't get by, um, by just popping a pill. Substitutes are bad for you anyway. Vitamin supplements are just compressed forms of vitamins, and they're not good for your stomach. Well, so you shouldn't I, really pop the vitamin pills. You should get vitamins naturally. Yes, eating vegetables. Uh, come to find out, that's absolutely right. Because I, I was a vitamin pill popper for uh, my entire life until I also read that, that they're actually killing you, unless they're advertising they with us, of course. In which case, it's a, a boon to your health. They are very bad for your stomach. Eat pomegranates; they're in season at the moment and very tasty. Pomegranates. Mm, yeah. Okay. Nice. I, I absolutely will do that. Thanks a lot, Emma. Sure. Take care. Stay off the pies. All right. Uh, scrape your tongue for me. Will you do that? <laughs> I'll do that right now. <laughs> okay, great. Cheerio. This is LBC. LBC 93. LBC 97.3. Yeah. 0845 6060 Nick Abbott. Uh, now, that uh, nice girl was talking about quitting, and uh, we are in the midst of helping you quit. If uh, you fancy winning a whole host of prizes, including an MP3 player, a luxury night out in London, a day of complete pampering, or a weekend away to a great European city, I would uh, recommend Paris. Is that one of the great European cities we're uh, giving uh, trips away to? Probably. Maybe. Maybe. We can't promise, but it might be. Uh, well, you can win all of those things for the next two weeks on LBC 97.3. Uh, the big quit is on. Not the, uh, the quick... What was it you said? The quick, quick date. date. Yeah. <laughs> not, the quick, not the quick date. The big quit is on to help you kick the habit. Each day we're going to give you a tip to help you quit, answer a simple question, uh, then text your answer, and you could be a winner. The big quit and London's LBC 97.3 supporting you in your quest for a smoke-free life. Oh, right, yeah. Which you don't get in Paris, France. Everybody smokes all the time. It was really surprising. It's kind of... It was bizarre being... S sitting in a restaurant where you're eating, you're stuffing, uh, you know, gorgeous French food in your face. Yeah. And everyone around you is smoking. Did it spoil it for I you? am having a fag, they were saying in French. Did it ruin your trip? Well, no, not really. But it was just such a surprise. I mean, it's, it's amazing how quickly you get used to no one smoking indoors. I mean, yeah. it's only a, a matter of months, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. Everybody smokes over there, by which I mean everyone, even all the, the time. Even the waiters. <laughs> well, not while they're serving. They don't have a fag <laughs> hanging out the corner of their mouth while they're putting the food down. Seasoning, sir? 
Yeah, exactly. Um, no, but it's really quite uh, quite surprising. They they smoke professionally over there. Well, of course I am smoking. So, it, but the restaurants. That's, do, do they have smoking areas in the restaurants, or is it just all smoking? Uh, yeah, the entire restaurant is smoking. Right. That, that I think that they, they their law is coming in in January. Right. Because they're going to join the rest of us, um, you know, the rest of the civilized world that doesn't allow people to spark up a fag inside, and they're going to be in deep trouble because it seems to be the national sport. It's going. It's going to be up, up raw. That'll be interesting, knowing the French. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Another new sport for the Olympics. <laughs> yeah, those paving stones, uh, they've only just uh, cemented them back down again from last time. They're going to be hurling <laughs> through the air, yeah. Here's uh, Banstead. Hello, Charlotte. Hello, Nick. Hey, Charlotte. Oh, can I, can I uh, pause you just there for one moment? Should yeah. we do this now? We'll do yeah. this. I'll come right back, all right? Okay. Cheers, my dear. BC 97.3 0845 6060 973 Nick Abbott See, I, I, I is a fashional. I could fit it in it. In it. Hello, Charlotte. Hello. Are you standing in front of Ian again? Are you standing in for him tonight? Um, no, I'm just, sort of, I'm just sort of, I was passing. Oh, uh, <laughs> just, just passing the building. Uh, and he said, um, hey. It's me in tonight. He's Pardon? not in then, isn't he? What? He's not in tonight, obviously. Ian. Ian's not here, no. No. You're no. going to have to talk to me. Oh, all right. Um, I'm annoyed with you. Oh, dear. Yeah, I heard you talking about the police. Yeah. Well, you seem to be running them down. No, I thought I made it quite clear that um, I bow to no one in my admiration for the police and all the work they do. As I oh. said, that they're, they're rushing against a crowd that is fleeing from something awful. Mm. I mean, I, um, I worked for them for a while, and they do a difficult job in difficult circumstances. Yeah, I wouldn't want to do that job. No, I mean, they do a great job. And um, with all the terrorist things they have to do and keeping, you know, top of things... Yeah, I understand that. They do a good job. The, but like, nobody seems to sort of do, say that. You, is that. Everyone runs them down, don't they? Well, one of the reasons you know, that... One of the reasons that it might seem like that, that that's what's happening is... Yeah. Is, is people are, are, are wrongly criticising the police for their interpretation of the... Uh, uh, of the instructions that they're given by... Our, um, uh, our, our leaders. <laughs> By which I mean targets. Now, if you're going to give someone a target that they must do, um, uh, and it's, and, and the same thing has happened every time they've tried to do it. It's always had the opposite effect to that which is intended, or not necessarily intended. Perhaps they knew that it was going to have this effect, or that, uh, that which was stated. If, for instance, and I, I've used this uh, example before, but it's a perfectly valid one, if uh, you go to um, your accident and emergency and the government says that you must be seen within an hour, whereas normally you're sitting on a hard plastic seat for four hours, right? right. Well, it, and, and they don't give you any extra um, uh, nurses or uh, assistance to make that happen, because yeah. human beings are running the service, and, uh, and uh, unfortunately, you can't do it with robots, and so we'll always take the easiest option. What they do is, they wheel you out of accident and emergency into the corridor, so you're not in accident and emergency anymore. Thereby, they can tick a box to say that you haven't waited for longer than an hour in accident and emergency. You're in a corridor. Yeah. You're not in A&E. Yeah. They're, they're, thereby meeting a government target. It's just the easy way around, and it's, um, and, and it's the way that uh, this happens over and over and over again. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I, I think our police are probably better than the Americans. Better? They? What do you mean, better? Well, well, I don't know. They just seem... <laughs> <laughs> well, when you see better. them on the telly, with <laughs> the American police seem very violent. Uh, well, I'm, sh I'm sure our police have the gr a, a great capacity for violence, as uh, any um, uh, uniformed uh, person uh, does in in any country. Yeah, yeah, but um, I, I I don't agree with these. Um, what are they called? These officers? They didn't jump in for their little boy, was it? The C. I don't know why we've got them. Community. What are they? Are I don't know why we've got them. PCSOs, Police Community Support Officers. Right. Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. Police Community Support Officers. Well, the reason yeah. that we've got them yeah. is it's another government target, but. Bobbies on the beat, but they're not bobbies. They're just pe people. They're looky likeies. They wear the same uh, luminous jackets, 
but they're not actual policemen. It's just so that um, uh, Jack A, or whoever it happens to be the Home Secretary uh, this minute, can stand up and say, well, we've put, uh, you know, so many extra thousands of bobbies on the beat, and but they're lying about that. No, they haven't. Um, That's the reason that we've got so many of them. Yeah, it's cheaper. Drowned. Um, policeman came along, didn't he? he? Jumped in, but he was too late for. Yeah, apparently so. Yeah. Hey, I mean, listen, Charlotte, the uh, the new news is coming up, and I bet it's for, uh, full of uh, bad news as well. So I've got to go. All right. Okay. Cheers, my dear. This is LBC. LBC ninety seven point three. Yeah. Oh eight four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Nick Abbott. Here we go. about all these topics that I bring in. Um, I must have got 30, 30 fresh, freshly laid topics, and we haven't covered any of them yet. I wrote down my favourites as well. Which were? Um, I was quite interested in the flights to nowhere. That's all right. OK, I'm going to do that, yes. OK. And the advertising for plane passengers. Right. And um, satellites in cars. OK, well, the satellites in cars thing is a thing that I've been, um, I'll just deal with that quickly, is the thing that I've been predicting forever and a day, and people have been saying, oh, no, it won't, and I've been saying, oh, yes, it will. Power-mad French President Nicolas Sarkozy wants to spy on every motorist in Britain to help pay for the EU. He's determined to force drivers to fit electronic tracker devices to their cars so they can be charged for every mile they drive. Now, this will happen. Yeah. But what they're going to do, which they're not telling us before they actually fit them, is, and write this down, I bet I'm right about it, fine us every time we stray over the speed limit. Because at the moment, you just get unlucky when you go past one of those cameras, right? Yeah. If they track you from space, they know what speed you're doing all the time. They also know if you do an illegal U-turn, or if you stay on a yellow line for too long, or you do anything that's in contravention of the law or uh, the highway code. Surely they know that already, don't they? Because of all... if you've got a sat-nav in your car, then they can yeah, already... Yeah, but your sat-nav isn't plugged into the government, is it? Well, well, they're using, sat they're, well, they're using satellites, yeah. right? And surely the government can access what... Uh, who's using that satellite and what information is being transmitted via that satellite? Does that make sense? Um, so, so in I a way, yes, it does. If you if does okay, it? if you've got a car that's got like an inbuilt sat nav system, yeah, or one with those uh, uh, where it suckers on the window, yeah. No, I don't because some bloke nicked it. Oh, sorry, that's why I didn't want to bring it up. But that information is bouncing back off that satellite yeah it knows exactly how fast you're going because it can calculate your speed via you know the distance you're traveling in and the journey time and so and the government just you know surely owns that satellite or it has some kind no, of i wouldn't think so well they have access to it i'm sure and so they can just access that information now um Do, hmm. i'm sure that they can Right. Well, if they could, they would. I'm certain of that. Well... So, it's not, it's not their uh, satellite, so perhaps they can't. Then maybe they could um, surreptitiously gain that information, but I don't think they legally can. But they will. Yeah, they will. It's coming, boys and girls. There will be no escaping. Th th now, it had, seems hard to believe it, but right now will be thought of, in years to come, as the golden age of motoring, when you could actually drift over the speed limit, everybody does it, between cameras and not get, uh, nabbed. Yeah, the, the, you know, you can still go out for, like, a Sunday afternoon drive. Yeah. And enjoy yourself. You remember enjoying yourself, don't you? No! Yeah. I think the current system that they use at the moment for, uh, for GPS is actually owned by the Americans, isn't it? Although, I'm led to believe that there is a European version which is being developed, which is not quite ready yet, and eventually it will be a real pain because everybody will then have to go over to this new satellite for Europe. So, yeah, maybe you've got a point. Yeah, I think that's correct, yeah. But it's in the research and development stage, I'm sure. Uh, well... If it's going to cost us money, yeah. you'd better believe that they're going to um, fast track it. 
Anyway, that's the uh, the spy in the sky thing. What's even uh, worse than that, and uh, is something that's made me scratch since I read it, this is really horrible. Yep. You might not want to hear this, particularly at this time of night when people will be considering going to bed. Mm. Bed bugs. Bed bugs. Right. I literally have been scratching ever since I uh, read this earlier on today, and I'm itching right now. I thought they were a myth. Britain is in the grip of an... Epi here comes that E word. Epi epidemic. Of bed bugs. Yeah. Cases of the blood-sucking leech parasites have rocketed in the past two years. In some cases, calls to pest control firms are up 500%. But in parts of London, they've soared tenfold, with big cities like Manchester taking the brunt of the infestations. Experts are even warning passengers on buses and trains keep standing, the seats may be infested with them. Oh, no! Yes. How do you know what they look like? Well, I, I'll tell you what uh, what they look like. See, now even my ear is itching. Like I've, I feel like I'm, <laughs> I'm covered in them. I'd okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, bed bugs. They are red brown, about the same size as an apple pip, and feed on human blood by piercing the skin. They can suck up to four times their own body weight in fifteen minutes. Oh, God, really? <laughs> Uh, public transport is a big way of spe spreading these bugs, apparently. People need to be cautious and avoid sitting down. Well, that's not a problem that most of us have, because when was the last time you got a seat on a tube? Hmm. I hadn't thought about that before, though. They're infested with them. But, uh, Crawling I... around they are. Sh what environment does it, you know... In people's homes, uh, if people's homes are badly hit, They'll carry bed bugs on their clothes. If they sit on public transport, they'll leave the bed bugs behind when they get up, and the next person will get a dose. <laughs> One flat this, tra this uh, chap treated was overrun with fifty thousand of them. So what? What are we doing wrong then? That they're living in our beds. He added, uh, I'm often called out to properties with people of- with more than 150 bites. No, really? I think that would kill me. I- I'd blow up like a balloon when any insect, uh, attacks me. <laughs> oh, that makes you laugh. That's nice. You, you, well, I'm here to amuse you. I make you laugh. You- you would- Like a clown? A bed bug wouldn't <laughs> overpower you, would it? No, it wouldn't ki- it wouldn't overpower me, like, throw me around the room. <laughs> but when they bite, uh, insect, uh, bites, I react very badly to them. Ah, You can easily pick them up on buses, he said, in airport lounges and from other people's dry cleaning. Even car boot sales make it worse as people buy furniture which may already be infested. Experts advise vacuuming mattresses and cleaning regularly to keep the bugs at bay. Uh, but if you got them, there's only one thing for it. Surely... Torch the place, <laughs> I would say. But do they actually live in- inside- in between the mattress, in the- in the actual centre of the no, mattress? No, I believe they live on the top. On the surface. Uh, thereby, uh, making it easier f for them to suck your blood. But y you've got, like, a- a sheet over the top of your mattress. Yeah, well, if they can pierce your skin, they can pierce the sheet. No, really? You say you'd have all, all these holes in your sheet? In your fitted sheet? <laughs> I don't wish to know about your sheets. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently it's, uh, another thing, uh, about global warming. We're all getting, uh, we're, we're... And this whole global warming thing is very unsatisfactory on a variety of different levels. W where's the warming part? We've got the, <laughs> we've got the mozzies <laughs> and, uh, and the bed bugs and, uh, you know, everything that goes with that, uh, but without the actual warming part. Yeah, it's a little disappointing. What happened to that? A little disappointing, isn't it? Let's have... it's Mr. Lister. Oh, good evening, Nick. Philip. I see that our fight against big bugs isn't up to scratch. Oh... Sorry. No, I shouldn't have said that. Here's the jokes, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, did you see any television while you were in France? No. The reason why I ask is that uh, up to fairly recently, France had the reputation of having the worst television in the world. I would uh, agree with that. Um, well, e everybody in Europe does. Spain, oh. Luxembourg, France, Germany, they're all rubbish. The reason why, Nick, many years ago, I say many years ago, a few years ago, there used to be a, a guy who did your spot where you are now. Hey, the, DJ! The 10 to 1 slot. 
Uh, Mike Allen, you've heard of Mike Allen? Mike Allen? Yes. yes, I know Mike Allen. And he had on a correspondent from France, and I asked him the question, is French TV the worst in the world? And he came up with some interesting facts. He said, the thing is that out there, people get home from work later. Right. But they don't get home till 7 o'clock in the evening, and television doesn't really start until 8 o'clock. When they all appear, no matter what European country you are in, they all appear to have the same program. Yeah. It's, it's in a giant studio and lasts for about four hours. Yeah, that's what he said. And they just have singers yeah. come on that you've never heard of yeah. and interviews, and it's like a, a giant magazine program that never ends. Well, what he said was that eight o'clock they have the news, and then at eight thirty they have the program that you've just described. They have a film or a, a, a you know a variety show. Yes. And uh, he said that years ago, he said, um, when, when French television was in its infancy, that um, if you didn't speak French, it was no good you turning the television on, because you wouldn't understand what it was all about. Yeah. And he said that is why French cinema is so popular. He said that people were queuing round the block outside cinemas, whereas people would, you know, stay at home and watch television. I don't follow the logic there. If, if well, the television was so boring that people went out to the cinema. Oh, I see. Right. And he was saying that for some films that uh, you actually had, it was a strange sight that people were queuing round the block to get in to see certain films because of the, you know, the awfulness of, of television. Uh, TV. Huh. Yes, so, so the quality nature of British television has killed Br the British film industry. Well. That's interesting. We, most of the films now, Nick, that we get in this country appear to be American. Well, yes, completely. Those are the only films, really, that anybody wants to watch. I mean, some of the, I, I always read the reviews to see if there's anything I want to see, and I'm amazed that some of the films that we get here, why they've not why they've allowed them, <laughs> how they ever made it into this country. Well, I think that uh, it, it's virtually a monopoly, isn't it? Yeah. The, uh, the the studios and the people who show the films are yeah. all um, very much intertwined. Yeah, yeah. Which but, is why uh, the same know, like, films get shown everywhere all at the same time. Because it seems that every week you get an Adam Sandler film in the country. Oh, God, if I never, if I never even oh. hear that man's name again, it'll be too soon. Well, I, he's got a new film, out, I believe, which I, I read a review of. And I read it, and I felt deja vu. It was... It seemed to me that I, there was a film in Australia which, with the same plot, which they seem, I think they must have pinched. What's a Paul the Hogan plot? film. What's the plot? Have you ever seen Strange Bedfellows with Paul Hogan? No. It's quite a funny film. It's not, you know, hilarious, but it is quite a, quite a, quite a, a watchable film. Uh, Paul Hogan and Peter Postlethwaite. Who, um... Uh, crazy name, crazy guy. Yeah. Uh, and, um, Steven Spielberg once said that Pete Postlethwaite yeah. was the greatest actor in the world. Oh, I wouldn't go, I wouldn't say that. I mean, I, I saw him in The Shipping News, which is one of my favourite films. Have you ever seen that? No. It's, uh, set in Newfoundland in Canada. But, as I say, the, to, you know, whether, whether it's changed, I think they've got more channels now in, in France, and of course they've got the, uh, they must have the uh, the satellite. So really, that's what I suppose they've sort of caught up with us. Uh, yeah, modern uh, I modern information technology. Uh, thank goodness for that, eh? Yeah, certainly. Is. That's all I've got to say tonight, Nick. All right. Okay. Thanks a lot, Phil. Bye. Tada. Um, there's there's also not only do we have bug uh, uh, bugs in our beds, but we also have bugs in our heads. Excuse me. Head bugs, a rare bug that eats human brains. No. Has killed six victims. Really? The invisible amoeba, which mostly affects uh, kids, thrives in warm, stagnant water and dirty swimming pools or hot tubs. That can't be because they you know, they put chlorine in water, loads so much chlorine that it, you know, is supposed to kill everything. It creeps up your nostrils and then eats your brain. What, bit by, literally eats it? Victims usually die within two weeks after getting headaches, a stiff neck, fevers and hallucinations. I've got that. Oh, well, you're not having a good week, are you? And I itch, too. Oh. There were 23 cases in the US from 95 to 2004. Not all fatal. Uh, there have been six this year, all fatal. The bug first discovered in Australia has not been found yet in the UK, but experts fear global warming. No, is spreading it. Global warming. Global warming will eat 
your brain, Zara? I think it's um, lots of people sleeping with each other when they shouldn't be. Because how else are they transferring all these bed bugs? Uh, that's a good point. If I didn't think anybody was sleeping with each other anymore. That's very old-fashioned. Is anybody well, still doing that? Well, not with me. Right. But they must be doing it with other people. That's why I haven't got any bed bugs. I'm getting jealous. I want some bed bugs. <laughs> I'll send over a packet. Watch them at your door. Well, then at least, I'd, you know... I'd You'll feel, feel like you're uh, getting I've, some action. I've got company in. Yeah. <laughs> and those bugs on um, tubes and stuff and brains yes. that you were talking about, those aren't bed bugs. Those are um, specifically chair bugs and brain bugs. I think, um, you know, we have to stand up for the bed bug and not allow these other bugs to encroach on their territory. Yeah, I think you've got a good point there. You're not as crazy as you sound. Exactly. I'm glad you agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, uh, the, yeah. the brain bugs, that's a completely different thing, but the, the, the bed bugs and the, seat, uh, and the seat bugs are the same bugs. It would be okay, though, really, if bugs took over the world, wouldn't it? They will, eventually. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, because then even more eventually, after that particular eventually, then those bugs will develop consciousness, they'll do their own little thing, then they'll die out eventually, and then another creature will have consciousness, and then, you know, that's the only thing that really life is about, is having consciousness, because then if there isn't any consciousness, it doesn't matter, because nobody knows about it. Right. Do you reckon? Uh, yes, but uh, if a bug... Uh, gained consciousness, yeah. um, or the ability to think um, rationally, yeah. it would still look icky. But um, if you think about it, all bugs look the same to us, but to them, all humans look the same. Oh, same. yeah, well, that's right. For to, uh, Some bugs are uh, really, uh, you know, oh. <laughs> they're just sending other bugs uh, up the wall, literally. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm sure there are. There are sort of, you know, sexy bugs. Mm kind of stronger, geeky bugs, good-looking, ugly bugs. <laughs> but they just have different criteria to us. Like, we don't like, you know, hair in the wrong places. Right. And sort of beard. They can't get enough of it, yeah. Maybe they do. Maybe that is, you know, the sort of bug heaven for them. Yeah. They could go to, uh, oh, I don't know, an ugly bug ball, perhaps. Well, I, but they wouldn't call it ugly. They would call it a beauty bug ball. Hot bug ball, yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I just think that they're probably getting really bored of all these humans squashing them in, in their beds. And I think it's time that we moved over and let them take over. Well, you're making a lot of sense. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Zara. Okay, bye. Cheers, ta -da. <laughs> Nice girl, out of her mind. Here's uh, Guildford. Hello, Bob. Hello there. Bob. I wanted to talk, talk about that now, but I think you've given me a fright. I'm going to sleep with all my clothes on and on the bedspread tonight. I'm going to sleep on the tiles in the kitchen. <laughs> Probably. Now, what I was going to say about SatNav, I think the way SatNav works is that the device in the car uses the satellite positions to work out where you are. The satellite doesn't, is not tracking the car. Yeah. It's You're like, right. It's like if I'm listening to the radio now, to LBC, you don't know that I'm listening. I'm just picking up the broadcast. That's what you think, Bob. <laughs> we can see you. <laughs> I'm in bed at the moment trying to think uh, how many bugs, how many bugs are yeah. coming up. Millions, up. millions and trillions oh. of them. They're, lo they're, making, they're forming an orderly queue, Bob. It is scary, I tell you. It is scary. You'll be uh, d just a desiccated uh, husk <laughs> by morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for setting us straight there, Bob. Cheers. Very good. Ta -da. Yeah, you. you're right. Um, Chris, you idiot. It's, the, the, it's not the... You got it completely the wrong way around. And me, like a fool, half listening to you, totally agreed. You're making me look like a dope. <laughs> well, you know, I'm always right. <laughs> you're always uh, uh, there to uh, help me look like a dope. Thanks a lot, mate. The Treasure Hunt with Jay. LBC 97.3. 0845 60 60 973. Nick Abbott. Do you mind if I say a few words? Thank you. So, uh, the uh, list of uh, topics that I gave at the beginning of the programme, you had some other favourites? Uh, the flights to nowhere sounded quite interesting. Right, I'll do the flights to nowhere. Right. And the advertising for plane passengers. Right, well this is something that you will be experiencing whether you like it or not. Now where was that? Air advertising. There's going to be, um, 
You know, every inch of our life has been plastered with adverts. You just cannot get away from them. Where well, you walk on the roads and you uh, sit in uh, the tube train and they're right in front of your face and you're driving along the road and they're, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, roadside um, posters and so on. The one place that they haven't managed to stick an advert in your face is when you're looking out of an aeroplane window. E right. That's about to change. A startup called Ad Air, based in London, said that it had created what it called the first global aerial advertising network, which are giant billboard-like ads that will be visible from the air as planes approach runways. Oh, I thought you were going to say that they were going to, like, put, like, posters on the wings <laughs> of the plane. <laughs> well, that's not so crazy. Uh, what an incredible marketing opportunity. All these passengers with nothing else to do, staring down at the ground below, said the uh, managing director of Ad Air. They said it had secured regulatory and planning approval and set up ads. So I'm, I, I don't think that they should be able to gain planning approval just to litter the countryside with giant adverts. Do you? Well, the thing is, if you... thing is, it... So where does that stop? Was, wasn't there some plan to put an advert to, to shine an advert onto the moon? Really? Is, is that, they, have I imagined that, or is that, is that, that actually physically possible? No one can do that. That can't actually happen. That's just a myth. Well, you'd think it would be possible to shine an advert onto the bottom of clouds. Mmm... If it... yeah, ha it would have to be extremely low cloud. But the thing is, if it's... if they're advertising up at planes, in, you know, big fields, then that, that's... you know, you're not gonna see it. I from, suppose not, no. From the ground. This is you? gonna happen at uh, Heathrow? in uh, Paris, Atlanta, Denver, LA, Bangkok, Tokyo, Dubai, and they're still negotiating with others to create an ad network of 30 airports overall. So basically, wherever you fly, shortly, uh, you'll be seeing uh, adverts for, um, insurance companies. Or Perfume. Travel sickness tablets. Uh, fast food. <laughs> but the thing is, all these, so all these farmers now with all their, these big empty fields that are, you know, surrounding yeah. Heathrow and Gatwick and all that. They're, they're gonna just be happy. Like, H-A-P-P-Y. Well, they're just gonna be rolling in it now, aren't they? The introduction of ad air comes to strong growth in what marketing industry calls outdoor advertising, which includes ads on everything from billboards to bicycles. Marketeers see such ads as one way to reach busy consumers who pay less attention to television spots than they used to. And I was talking about this last night as well. People who advertise on television are screwed because shortly everyone will have um, your Sky Plus thing or your personal video recorder, mm -hmm. a hard disk that records everything so that no one ever watches TV live anymore unless it's a football match with England and you want to be part of the uh, universal experience. Nobody watches TV ads anymore. So what are they going to do? And what they've started to do is, and I've noticed this, uh, uh, there's lorries that drive around London which are, um, uh, billboards. They're just, mm -hmm. there's no other purpose for the lorry other than that it's a giant billboard. And they've now started to make these all singing and dancing. They are TV screens with sound, blasting at you whatever the, um, whatever the commercial is. Well, and I find that I object to that. Do you? Absolutely, yes. That is, um, that's befouling the air with, uh, the jingles, whatever they are. They, I don't think you should be allowed to do that at all. That's they they did try that with uh, bus stops, didn't they? That's noise pollution. Yeah, where you'd, you'd, you'd wait for your bus and it would either bellow a, a theme tune out to you or give you some information or yeah. squirt scent at you. <laughs> really? Well, yeah, that's nice. Apparently. The scent of a bus. You see, mm. you see, I don't think the TV companies will let it happen that you can skip the ads. They'll It's happened already. Yeah, but I don't, I think there'll be a U-turn where they'll have some kind of technical system that won't allow you to edit out the adverts. I think it's, it'll go the other way. In America, there's, uh, the, the machine will automatically edit out the adverts. I think that's what TiVo machines do. They, they opted not to allow them uh, to do that in this country uh, in order to um, uh, give people the opportunity to Haven't watch Haven't they also ads. Re relaxed the regulations with regard to the uh, amount of minutes of advertising you can now get yeah. per hour? Well, I so talked about that at length last night, yeah. and, uh, and that's true. We are going yeah. in the American way in that respect, yeah, which indeed. is not good. But, as I say, if you've got uh, one of those PVRs, then you're not going to watch the ads anyway. They could stick a hundred minutes of ads in an hour, and you still wouldn't be watching them. Uh, it would be a uh, feat. Mm. I kind of like the ads. They're, they're, ent they're entertaining, aren't they? No. 
Yeah, you know, you're driving on the, on, you know, on a busy motorway or, you Watching know. TV. Yeah, you're right. No, it, it's just <laughs> nice to, s you know, well, you, you're stuck in a jam, you just yeah. want to see something. On television. Yeah, remind me never to get in a car with you. LBC 97.3 0845 6060 Nick Abbott. You're wondering what it's all about and I can't tell you because I don't know myself. Burton on Trent. Oh, Adrian. Hello, uh, well, Nick. How you doing? I am all right, mate. <laughs> yeah, you're sort of about, you've reminded me of, of um, stories you occasionally see when you're on the book of sat -nabs. You ever seen in papers where people have uh, apparently drove into streams and nearly off cliffs and stuff? Yeah. I mean, that's, you've got to be really dumb to do that, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Uh, yes, I would say that that is correct. Yes, really done. <laughs> but you seem to you seem to get them down there. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, you do tend to trust them. I mean, more than uh, more than that, you tend to watch them a lot. You do, you you do tend to check whether it represents the road coming up as you can see it out of your windscreen, for no other reason than you've got a colourful TV in the car. I'm not sure that they're a great boon to road safety. No, <laughs> don't be banned next. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I uh, I, I uh, banned them personally. I'm not buying another one of those. Not so some tow rag come and nick it. Yeah, I mean, that is my. Right. Haven't got your home address program in, by the way, have it? Well, no, I thought about that as well, and um, because I'd read to, I'd I, I'd read the whole thing about how not to get your uh, sat nav nicked. Don't leave the sucker marks on the window, and don't program your home into uh, the thing there. And I did, um, I did both of those things. Now my ear itches, like I'm itching all over. Ever since I read that thing about the bed bugs earlier on this afternoon, I've literally just been itching all over. Yeah, yeah, you're really upset because I've, I've been up, I've been up since like six o'clock, so I need some sleep. <laughs> sleep yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and um. And once you start scratching, once you start thinking about it, then every part of you think, ooh, oh, there, there goes another one. Yeah. So. And talking of which, you ever checked, um, I know you have a lot of illnesses, so have you ever checked the um, NHS website? And you ever had any maladies or anything? Uh, um, no. No, well, don't. Because For fear of what I might find. Yeah, so if it's just like the flu, um, it's probably certain death it could lead to. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you take any pill. If you, if you read the, uh, the instruction manual that comes with any, any pill, it, um, maybe I have one with, oh no, I don't. The, 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 the instructions that come with the pill say, uh, you know, possible um, uh, uh, side effects of taking this pill, and it might, including aspirin, anything, will be uh, nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, headaches, uh, all your hair might fall out, everything up to and including death. <laughs> Is that what's caused my hair to fall out? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, but what, what I was going to speak to you about, um, well, you know, I work in a factory, and there's a storeroom in the factory, right, and, which is locked at night, um, overnight. And somebody wanted to get in the other day. And so instead of going to the gate house and getting a key, they actually... Um, rammed through it with a set of, on a faultless truck. <laughs> what, they were that, they were that, um, busy? What? No, they, they wanted to get in the store room. Usually you go down the gate house to get a key. But this, uh, bloke, who was a manager, uh, rammed through the door to gain access to the store room. <laughs> you mean he was, it was a raid, or that he just wanted to get in as part of his working day? Yeah, he just wanted to get in. Plus, the, the even better thing is, he emailed the uh, manager of the um, department telling that he'd done it. <laughs> well, what's in the storeroom? Um, well, just your normal um, sort of bleach and um, <laughs> caustic stuff, like um, boil-out fryers and stuff. Wow, he must have really been keen to clean. <laughs> <laughs> he, must, he must have been a... Some sort of uh, indelible spot that he just couldn't uh, wait to attack. <laughs> there is there's some unbelievable, unbelievably stupid people, isn't there? Well, it's, I'm a bit bemused by that. So he could have got the key, but instead he decided to drive through the door. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah he probably, apparently, point is, he might be a bit of damage to the door. 
Right. Was there is like sort of wrecked both of the doors. It's right with a bit with a brick <laughs> Well, I would um I wouldn't pick a fight with that boss, Adrian. Not that particular one. No, yeah, well, just mean, uh, whatever he says. Just nod your head and smile. All right. Yeah, but the thing is, anybody else would do that. They'd be instantly like down the road, wouldn't they? Yeah. But um, because it's manager. Well, that's right. Different rules for management. <laughs> <laughs> Never forget that. Yeah. And, um, well, finally... Uh, Don't do know, as we do, do as we say. Uh, yeah. <laughs> finally, you're not going to like what I've been uh, reading on the internet. You know, they're bringing a lot of old shows back now. You realise the Violet Woman's been made back, uh, well, back in America. Yeah, I've read something about that. Who is the Bionic Woman now? Um, it's some bird that used to be in EastEnders. Some bird. <laughs> it used to be in EastEnders? Yeah. She's British. Mich that Michelle Ryan, I think it is. The Bionic Woman is, uh, right. So it can't be here too long before we get the Bionic Man back, the six million dollar man. No, but I mean... We can that. rebuild him. Yeah, there is the show that you, you're not, you're not gonna like this. There's, uh, possibility of Night Rider coming back. <laughs> right, well that'll never work. The original show is just too stupid. The Man with a Talking Car. That'll yeah. never work. Well, when it, co when it comes back and it's on satellite... Yeah, then uh, you let me know straight away, all right. Yeah, Thanks right. a lot, Aid. <laughs> <Right. laughs> right. Here is Mill Hill. Oh, James? Hello there. James. Hi, uh, um, yeah, I was listening to you talking about the, um, TVs and the adverts. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't think I've seen a TV advert in a, a long time, probably about nine months. Yeah. Because I, uh, I watch all my stuff on the, on the internet. I mean, not, not... YouTube, try YouTube, but better quality, full screen. Oh, you uh, mean Pirate Bay? <laughs> uh, well, no, not Pirate Bay. Not downloading anything. Nothing, you know, no, no, nothing being downloaded to my computer. Uh, I watch everything literally like as if it was a, a TV channel that I'm changing. Uh, you know, I, I, I go to a, a certain website which I don't, you know, obviously I, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say. Well, I don't know. Is it a is it a pay thing? Is it illegal? You know, it's not pay, and uh, I assume it's not illegal because it's it's pretty high up on you know the Google meter thing, and a lot of people would be able to see it. So I wouldn't see how this is the thing. I would think everything I've seen on there I know is illegal, but isn't illegal because of all these strange copyright laws. I mean, uh, the, I, I I would think you know that we, we pay the the. Um, the, the, what's that tax called? So you can watch TV. Well, there's another excuse to give money to them. Uh, <laughs> the, the bloated fee, exchequer. Yeah. Okay. yeah, the license fee. Yes, <laughs> that tax really. Um, it, it's um, I pay that, but that you know, obviously. But uh, do you watch BBC programs on this thing? Uh, watch like you know, I, I choose to watch whenever I want with my girlfriend. Doctor Who, Doctor Who series one, two, three. And you don't possess um, uh, a TV license. Oh no, I've, I've got a TV licence in my house, I live right. with my parents, but I don't watch the Sky, I don't watch any of their television, I don't watch terrestrial TV. Um, I, the only time I do is say X Factor, I've been watching on the internet. Um, but don't, isn't it a tiny little screen you've got on your computer, don't you find that unsatisfactory? Oh no, it's not a tiny little screen, my computer's a, just a 21 inch, you know, monitor. Which is it's more than good enough in my in my room. Uh, then it's, I used to have a 32 inch widescreen plugged into the computer. Um, but these 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 channels are there. They're on the internet where um, you know it's, it's just as good as as being on TV. If if you know if you all you have to do is click on a couple of little buttons on a little. Uh, I mean the, the the site that the site that seems to have like a hundred or two hundred other sites connected to it. It's, uh, if you if it's all right to say, I would be OV Guide, Online Video Guide, OV Guide. Well, I tell you what, they're, they're, whatever you're uh, watching there is the future. There's nothing they can do about it. It's going to sweep television uh, away and uh, ruin their business plans, just like uh, the internet has uh, ruined the business plans of the major record companies. Everything has changed in the last few years, not even five years, really. It's been so quick and so complete 
that it is, uh, it's, it's taken the, uh, the industry almost completely unawares. And still, they're uh, attempting to stick their head in the sands and pretend that it's, it's not happening. They're putting their fingers in their ears and they're humming loudly, hoping that it'll all go away and then it'll return back to the 1970s when uh, you could make uh, an honest um, uh, 100 million pounds from, uh, you know, abusing your artists. These days, it's, uh, it, that, the entire industry was completely thrown up in the air. So it's happened with music, it will happen with television too. And so you are at the, cre the crest of a wave, James. Oh, I, I, I love it. I've been doing this for years. I don't use MySpace or Facebook. They're useless mediums of... of Wasting time, yeah. So it's anti-social. They say it's social, but it's I mean, not, there no. there's no, there's no new clubs or bars or stuff like that because no one is. It's not in demand anymore. Everybody wants a new cyber bar, cyber cafe <laughs> where they can pick their nose whilst they're talking to someone. I'm sure that that has got to be a fad, and that in ten years' time, people will look back on that and uh, think, "What the hell were we doing?" Well, yeah, I mean, I was I was one of the many people who were, uh, you know, ten years ago called called geeks uh, using the computer to talk on on this thing we used to call IRC chat, um, and, and you know, on these on these strange uh, ways of getting chat before you could do it with that, like, even AOL chat and stuff like that. And um, now all these all these kids are on there thinking that they're they're, they're you know they've Danny got 200 Zuko. close personal friends yeah well, they think they're Danny Zuko from Greece because you know, they're, they're, they're on the internet on their own MySpace webpage I mean yes. come on I, I could write a book but you know what you know. whether you're writing a book or whether you're chatting to your mates on uh, my face Facebook it all amounts to one thing typing uh, obsession I well. hate typing I just yeah. won't do it well, that's that's why the TV ratings have, have plummeted because everybody's obsession has gone from television on on there to well, television to with each other. To to yeah, to, it's, it's, it's lean forward television rather than uh, lean back. Which uh, lean back entertainment is your TV where you're not actually personally involved. It just washes over you, which is my favourite. But lean forward is uh, is your computer, and that's. Uh, I'm sure that thing has got to be a fad because basically it's so silly to sit there thinking that you've got. Th uh, two, three uh, hundred personal friends and just typing to each other all the time. That's insane. You're wasting your lives, people. Go out and talk to someone. People aren't getting laid as much as well. We need to return back to the 60s mindset where people are on the streets parading for whatever and then, you know, going down to the park and and having a nice little jolly up with some cider. And doing it, yeah. Groovy. Yeah, doing it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot, James. Take care. Cheers. Ta-da. This is LBC. What does your day... LBC 97.3 Oh eight four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Affirmative. Nick and Nick Abbott. Come on, we're running late! Let's have... Who's been waiting the longest? Um, Electric Parade. Oh, Tallulah. Hello, you. Hey, you. Hey. Oh, you know what? I have a... I you know, I, I, when you always finish, I think... I started with a subject, and I go to the next, and I go to the next, and I will just know, I will I don't know what you're saying, Tallulah. What are you saying? Within the last five minutes while I was waiting, or eight minutes, yeah. suddenly I had a list full of subjects that came up. Just right, and you didn't note down any of them, right? No. And now you've completely not. forgotten them. No, I've got, I've got them all in my head. Oh, right. But I shall not discuss ten subjects in one go. No, just the one. Just the one. Which is? Which is? Wow. Um, well, let's stick to the first one I plan to do. Go on. Well, I, I wonder why all these guys that say, oh, the tele... Because, you know, since a year I do not watch television. Right. And I can, just while listening to LBC 97.3, new telephone number is which one? <laughs> oh, 0845 Cool. Yes. Well, I just wonder, because everybody's complaining, but still everybody seems to watch it. Watch what? You, television. Oh, right. And you need to be rather brave to jump off the board and not to do it. Yeah, going off grid. Yeah. Well, because I did it with, with, with the landline, well, I have it back now because it was needed, but every now and then you just should go for it and just check it out, what it's like to not have it, instead of complaining. 
Yes, I did think um, a few years ago it might be good to have a day of the week where I don't watch television. Yeah. I think that this was tried in uh, Norway, Sweden, one of those uh, places where they eat cheese for breakfast. And um, I think it worked uh, uh, quite well. And um, it worked for me for about one week. And then I went straight back to watching television again. Well, and, and did you think because you're an addict or what? Um, addict? Well, no, because the definition of an addict is that you can't do without it. But when I go on holiday, I don't watch TV at all. And I don't miss it for a second. Okay. Well, but, um, um... Now I feel like the, the insect has walked into my ear and is, um, is actually burrowing into my brain. I've got that uh, feeling that there's something going on inside my head now. What, the creepy crawlers? Yeah. They've actually, oh the, yes, they're actually burrowing into my, um, brainy substance. Oh, no! Exactly. You, you are crazy with all your <laughs> fantasies of bugs and all yeah. these things. Well, I'll be uh, dead and then I'll be right. <laughs> but no, you won't die and it, it will still be all right. Okay. At the night. All right. <laughs> that's, a, that's your uh, considered medical opinion, is it? Uh, it's a fact. Right. Well, I feel much better now. Thanks a lot, Tallulah. That's cool. Bye-bye. Cheers, Malou. Ta-ra. Um, we've still got a flight to nowhere. I will do that. Right. Let me see how long that might take. Mm, okay. Any more ads in this hour? Nope. How about Neesden? Hishan. Hello. Did I get that right? Hishan? Yes, that's right. Yes. Radio, what's up? Yeah, first time caller. I'm just calling about this TV license. Yeah. I'm having difficulty receiving, you know, TV uh, at home. Uh, you know, this oh, area. well, we'll send someone around. <laughs> Thank you very much. Got a big rate. But I'm receiving through a dish. I'm, I'm, I'm not receiving BBC or ITV, but I still have to pay TV license. I've been paying TV license, although I'm not receiving or recording or anything. Yeah. Uh, welcome to Britain. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. So I'm going to have to stay doing that. I'm going to have to, to be paying for... Something you don't use. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. It's the uh, British way, yeah. All right, it is common. It is happening. Did it happen to you before? Uh, um, or what, to uh, pay, for, pay for things that I don't use? Oh, <laughs> yeah, all the time. you don't get at all. Um, yes, all the yeah. time. I hardly watch any, um, uh, I can't like think of anything what? that I watch on the BBC now. No, I mean, like what? Something you're paying for, okay. Yeah. Like what? Can you give me an example? Um, well... I'm glad that you put me on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can we think of an example, boys, of something that we pay for that we don't actually uh, get or use? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't even get, let alone you. Well, half the clothes that I buy, it's something you I only ever put anyway, them on in the shop, yeah. and then I just stick them in the wardrobe, never to be worn again. Um, Isn't it funny to pay for it? If it's something you can't see, you can't hold, you can't touch, it's touch, a waste, yeah. isn't it? Completely. But, okay, I'm, 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 I'm prepared to pay for that, something I can't right. I don't get it. I don't get the service. <laughs> I don't know where the money goes. I don't know. I don't know. Well, where. nobody knows where the money goes. All we know is that there's not enough of it, so they need to take ever larger amounts. Of it. And give you nothing in return. And give you nothing in return is, is well, the right answer. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll now pay happily because I, yeah. uh, you and some other people are... Uh, right. Now, now you know the reason for it, that there is no reason, they'll be much happier in paying for something that you don't get. Yeah. yeah I'll continue paying, but... <laughs> All right, good man. I'll just be a bit more happy about it. All right. Well, we want you to be happy. Uh, we're, we're trying to help on this station, and if we can uh, make you feel happy about paying a lot of money for something that you don't get, great, then we yeah. feel that that's a job well done. Yeah. Yeah. All I'm right, thanks a lot, Hashin. No problem. Or Hishan, I'm sorry. Yes. All right, cheers, Hishan, mate. Hishan. Ta-ta, Hishan, yes. All right, then. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Here Bye -bye. is uh, Chertsey. Oh, Tony. Hello, Nick. Tony. Yes, yes, I'm here. Yes, Tony. Uh, what, so you're in with the government as well, then, eh, Nick? In what sense? Providing happiness. Um, I'm providing happiness. Yeah, to make people happy so that they don't worry about, um paying for things that they don't get. Yeah, that's right. I'm uh, Gordon's right-hand man. <laughs> he is my oh. father. Oh, oh. Uh, really? So, what's up, Tony? 
Uh, that, the advertising, Nick, that, that, that sounded pretty, pretty interesting, you know, um, air advertising or advertising that you see yes. from the air. Coming to so an it, eyeball near you soon. Yeah, yeah, it sounds pretty good. Did they say, um, where, where would you read it? Did they say how they were going to do it? Um, I think they're just going to paint it on the ground, aren't they? Oh, I see. That sounds pretty good. Like those wow. things that they do on, um, uh, football, uh, pitches that look 3D, and you, oh, and, yeah. you and your brain can't, um, look at it in any other way than three-dimensional until the ball rolls across it. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Yes, yes, yeah, that could work. But what about lasers and that? Do you remember, sort of, like, laser displays in the 80s and so on, on the side of buildings, on the underside of clouds? Yeah, I was, um... <laughs> you can't... You could even put one on the moon with those. Well, this is what I was saying earlier on. I was uh, yeah, batted right. down, uh, swatted away I was by Chris, who uh, yeah. pretending what he, he knows know? what he's talking about. <laughs> See? Well, take that example of the, uh, the satellite. Does he know anything? It's what satellite? Well, you know, he was talking about how, um, how the uh, uh, tracking system... Oh, that. Was. Yeah, we were trying to forget that. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's another interesting one as well. Because what about this, uh, this thing today that came out about um, um, the government um, tracing all, all telephone calls? I know. Yeah. Well, that's For something like ten years, they'll be keeping records of every phone call everyone makes. Yeah. But what do you think that um, they all go through computers anyway? You know, all the... I'd sort of assume that they did that anyway. Well, um... They're just telling us that they're doing it now. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, 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 it needs a hell of a lot of computing power to, rem to, to monitor every single um, conversation, but it's possible. Yeah, you know, with, within a, a couple of years, it'll be the computing power that you'll be able to carry around on your wrist like a watch. Well, that's right, yeah. I mean, you know, what was it about the, uh, the first moon land in the computer on that as the sort of uh, computing power that... Um, the that digital uh, calculator has got right now, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, I'm running out of time, Tony, but I've got to go, all right. Okay. Thanks a lot. Bye. Cheers. Ta-da. Bye. Here is, um, Catford. Trixie. Hello, Nick. Trixie. You do realise that you're the first man to ever keep me up all night and not be here. You do realise that, don't you? Uh, well, I do now. Yes, exactly. Thank you very much for talking about these bed bugs and amoeba. Oh, and yeah. What. Yeah. The thing is, I have actually found these nasty sort of, not actual bed bugs, but sort of, um, little grub-like creatures around my flat, probably um, moth pupae or whatever, so, and it's, they're not very pleasant. So to actually imagine, I'm glad you said the size of them, apple pip size thing. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You're a cruel man, you know. Nick. Well, I didn't like reading it, so I thought I'd spread a bit of misery Precisely. around. Precisely. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's, that's part of you, really. You don't care about the happiness, do you? <laughs> not really, you see. The spreading of Well, evil. I'm just trying to help, Trixie, that's all. I know all. you are. Well, thank you. You are really going to keep me up. Tonight. Yeah. Well, that's good. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> and as for the adverts in the sky, I think it's a crazy idea. They'll probably put holograms up through the clouds, you know. You know how people look out at the clouds? It's a beautiful sight. And then suddenly you see... Well, you know what? The advertising industry is going to have to come up with new things. And I think that one of the ideas will be to um, colonise the sky, because it's about the only place that they haven't put anything on it yet. And there will be a point at which we say, well, hang on a minute, who actually owns the sky? I know. And they've been talking about putting giant mirrors in space yeah, that will have 24-hour right. daylight worldwide. It's crazy. Well, I actually like that idea. I mean, that, that was an idea put up by uh, countries that um, uh, uh, all of their citizens commit suicide when they're uh, <laughs> in their teens because they just can't stand the dark anymore. Oh, it God. never gets light at all. Oh, and so they thought they'd, they'd launch giant mirrors into space to beam the sun onto their um, that, darkened existence. That would just do my head in. Well, I it mean, sounds like a good idea to me. Oh, what, doing my head in? Oh, thank you very much. I mean, I'm already just about out there, aren't I? Um, I mean, I, come, come to my little cupboard, and I mean, the curtains are just closed. Right, I absolutely will not do that, Trixie. I know you won't. I'm but not listen, inviting I, you. I've got to, I've got to go, because I've just completely run out of time, and there is one story that I must do, all right? Enjoy. Cheers. Okay, bye. Now, this is the flight to nowhere thing. An Indian entrepreneur has given a new twist to the concept of low-cost airlines. The passengers boarding his Airbus 300 in Delhi do not expect to go anywhere because it never takes off. How come? All they want is the chance to know what it's like to sit on a plane. Really? Listen to announcements 
and to be waited on by stewardesses bustling up and down the aisle. What's the point in that? As on ordinary aircraft, customers buckle themselves in and watch a safety demonstration, but when they look out of their windows, the landscape never changes. Even if the captain wanted to get off the ground, the plane wouldn't go far. It only has one wing, and a large part of the tail is missing. Some of the passengers has, have crossed India to get on the plane. Who char uh, says the, the guy who charges about two pound each for the passengers taking the, quotes journey. The plane has no lighting, and the lavatories are out of order, and the air conditioning is powered by a generator. I think I've flown that airline. <laughs> I think we all have. They go from Luton, don't they? <laughs> 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 and the reason is because um, people in India are, are, are generally so poor that they will never have the opportunity to fly. And so they actually cross the continent in order to spend two pounds just to sit in a stationary plane because they've only ever seen planes in the movies and they want to know what it would feel like to be on a plane. Cramped. That sounds... Ex I mean, you think that you're starved for entertainment. This is what they're doing over there. Wow. So stop whining. Well, you know, I guess... No, it, I mean it. Oh. Stop whining! Oh. <laughs> what, what were you gonna say? <laughs> well, I guess it makes sense, doesn't it? You know, if, if, if there's a market for it, then yeah. why not fill it? If you build it, it, people will come, that's right. The passengers who are too poor to afford a real airline ticket and uh, most have only ever seen the interior of an aircraft in films. I see planes passing all day long over my roof. Selin, a 40-year-old tyre mechanic, was quoted as saying, I had to try out the experience. It's kind of sad, really, isn't it? Yeah. You're not in any way moved. Well, no. Sounds it's a bit like the circle line, too, Quid. Sit on it, go nowhere. Jasmine, a young teacher, has been longing to go on a plane and said, it's much more beautiful inside than I ever imagined. Yeah, that's, that's what people say about the inside of planes. They're so beautiful.